in a world in crisis. Can three idiots find hope in the darkest of places? Will love conquer all, or will hate win out in the end? This is a show called Hate. Welcome to a show called Hakes, a podcast in which we explore love, hakes, and everything in between in search of greater meaning and perhaps a little perspective. I'm John. I'm Nick. I'm Chris. We're back. We're Woo-hoo! back. 20, a 2020 vision. Yeah. Uh, if I get one more email saying that, I'm going to reply to it, even if it is an automated system. Oh, I, I thought I was the first. Well, your brother was actually the first person to tell me that joke. And he's an optometrist. He's an op- yeah, which I thought was very good. But I've heard it so many times since. And every every time we hear it, the person thinks they have come up with it. Every time it... someone says it, an optometrist dies. Yes, that's <laughs> so, true. You know. is, it, is it like you're now just hyper aware to it? Maybe. You know, you're maybe. spotting it. It's like... I get emails, like marketing emails and emails aimed at me at work saying, have you got 2020 vision? It doesn't help that the the numbers 2020 have two circles in it, which means perfect glasses opportunity. Oh, you're right. Uh, or eyes. Yeah. Do you, do you reckon like big, big Optom? Like, uh, big, <laughs> I hate Optom. Big glass. They've been waiting forever because now they can legitimately manufacture you know glasses that look like 2020 yeah this is yeah. the this is the year that not, it's all been working not towards. since 2002 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. and only for the cross-eyed people the thing is, <laughs> national express have done well where they shape the bus like a two and a road like the zero one but surely that could be applied to any year yeah that's not, mm. it's weird that they've done it for this year oh, did okay. they do it twice though yeah two zero two zero two yeah. zero two zero that's still very that's weird. the next that's the next sequel <laughs> vin diesel vin, Di- vin diesel and the rock <laughs> I talking about talking about things you suddenly become hyper aware of. I'd gone my entire life without knowing that a champagne saber is a thing. What? What? What is that? That's well, that's, that's such a be... segue you've made there. No, John. Well, it's like you were desperate to tell okay, us. Well, that. Tell us well, about no, your you, champagne you, saber. You dug it out of my okay beer riddled brain. It yeah. was a so you can legitimately buy a sword, right? Oh, filled to with open champagne, champagne to open champagne bottles. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh yeah, you scoffed. Yeah, sense. you know what it. No, I do know what it is. Or do you just infer? They, do, they slide yeah. it along the neck of the bottle, and then it's really? they, ideally you would just take it clean off. How big's the sword though? Are we pretty, talking? Oh, pretty big. Not yeah. like no, it's not. Opener. It's not like a letter opener. No, it's a proper like two bad dudes. Imagine, awesome. imagine yeah. like uh, Narsil. Okay, what? Aragorn sword. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm not a John. massive nerd. I was watching well, the football. I was. <laughs> <laughs> no way, that was the other way around. <laughs> um. So no, I have heard of that. Yeah. And it's called a champagne saber. I didn't know that was what it was called. Yes. I was imagining something you well, put you... in the champagne bottle to keep it fresh, like a spoon. Oh, I see. Well, how have you heard of it then? Because you're on I've seen videos of people screwing there, it up. There we go. Yeah. That's the thing. I've gone my entire life without knowing that was a thing. And then I see one video about it, and mm. it said champagne saber. And my th- and it was the slow-mo guys who first stuff oh, in slow motion. Yep. And I thought, oh, they're going to be dueling with... Um, erupting champagne. Yeah. See, my brain immediately went with a glass sword a- <laughs> filled with champagne. <laughs> Isn't it interesting <laughs> how we all went to completely different places? <laughs> we're all individual. individual. Dukes. They like they duel with them. The we- first to save a break. Uh, you drink it up the bloody end. We- yeah. <laughs> We also have such different brains. We bring us all together, and it's absolute magic. That's what this podcast is. Well, the thing is, I was going to say, like now, I can't escape videos of, of champagne, champagne sabers. sabers but no that's actually that's not a coincidence that's the youtube algorithm that's, and, yeah, the, the, and algorithm the fact that me. my phone is always listening are you still constantly. seeing videos of little asian women eating big plates of food that you used no to see? now it's dashens dashens why did you look up a photo eating of dashens, dashens. <laughs> we all say dash- <laughs> these asian women are just hungry for dashens <laughs> their knows no bounds we've said dashens probably about six times now your phone's heard all of that oh you're right your phone yeah. is convinced that you love dashens big time it is weird i swear because um i've been um, you have a dashen though you're, you're yes a family my, fam- my family has a dashen that's, probably, yeah. why. that's yeah. probably why that's yeah. probably why well i don't I don't. Like I see a lot of photos of Labradors. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, because you won't. You never shut up about Labradors. How you, you, dare you're, you're you? In, you're in. That a reminds me of something I like a Labrador <laughs> said to me the other day. You 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 said it yourself on air. You're in a group called like. You are in a club. Cheltenham Labrador. Labrador or owners. Something. GLO for short. Yeah. 
Yeah. Great. I got a hoodie, a branded GLO hoodie for Christmas. Now, you're it, joking. No, I'm not. So is I it, wish it, you were. It's great. Is it any wonder <laughs> then that you keep seeing bloody Labrador videos? No, plus I'd use the hash, hashtag Labradors of Instagram a lot. Well, maybe. So that's probably part yeah, of it. Yeah, maybe, because Facebook owns that. Daisy has her own Instagram account, as I think I have mentioned on this podcast before. And God knows what she's buying on your credit card. I know. Tell me. It's terrifying. I was um, breaking up concrete in the back garden. I thought you were something else there. I was really scared. Uh, is, that, is that part of the album? Relationships. Breaking up, yeah. breaking up relationships. Yeah. Heartbreaker John. I've been breaking up some concrete. Cool. And I swear I didn't... I wasn't like taking selfies while I was doing it or anything. Uh, <laughs> but a, I swear I'm idea. getting adverts for like pickaxes and oh. stuff like that. So, I swear the algorithm can read your mind. Because I swear I've thought about things before and not spoken to anyone about it, and then it's popped up. I swear, maybe. I can't. I can't name an actual incident, but I swear. But that's maybe, happened. but maybe like, <laughs> do you keep your phone in the bedroom while you're sleeping? <gasps> that's you, it. Do you think I'm talking? No, I think it's turning on at like two a.m. Yeah. and it goes, Chris. Oh, I see. This is Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah. You really want some drywall? Yeah, I good, do. Good night. I do. Good, good night. Sleep, sleep tight, angel. <laughs> <laughs> That's delicious. It does a little wave. It's like a warm hug, isn't it? He kisses the lens. <laughs> you come downstairs. I can't imagine Mark Zuckerberg showing emotion <laughs> even for the algorithm. <laughs> this is why, like, everyone's talking about, well, maybe not everyone right now, but everyone in my life is talking about Amazon Echoes and all that Everyone's stuff. talking about it. Everyone yeah. talks about Amazon Echoes, right? Every, my brother's just got Amazon Echoes all through his house. My right. Dave's got, like, a thing like it. And they've all hooked their lights into it, right? Yeah. But bear in mind, both of them have just had babies. Okay. And their hands are always full of baby, <laughs> like covered in baby. Just constant baby just everywhere. Baby everywhere. Yeah. So they, to turn a light on is actually a bit of a challenge when you're constantly mm, trying sure. to like be covered in shit or puke or whatever. Oh, yeah. So my brother particularly has all of these like things he can say. So like he goes like, Alexa, nappy time. And then the lights change in the house, oh, all around the house, oh. just for where he needs to go to do the nappy stuff. <laughs> what, like, like um, when you're trying to flee a plane yeah and the lights light up like it's exactly you just like get that. like a little like green strip <laughs> going exactly along the floor, yeah. pointing and it, towards it, the nearest it plays exit soothing feces music you know right that sort of thing to keep Luca happy everybody poops that's it that's you, you're music. almost getting into the territory of um the internet of things indeed which is the stupidest phrase I hate maybe it. ever i hate I it what does, that, what does that mean it means like uh so okay say uh you had um a beer bottle I do have I, a beer bottle. Say what you see. Clearly my mind, my, I literally my, have a beer bottle. So, here, say yes. you have like a beer bottle, which is um, empty. Well, yours is empty. Mine is half. Bordering on problem drinking. Mine's half full or empty, depending on your this outlook. Is, this is yeah. garbage. Get going. So say you had a <laughs> <laughs> spin-off. Say you had a, you had a smart... Let's speed it up. Come on. You had a smart bottle with a computer chip in it. Okay. And it realised that when, when you were running low, right. it would be connected to the internet. Yeah. And it would automatically put in an order to, say... Tesco's beer .com. or beer.com or delivery. <laughs> that sounds or like something. a pain in the ass that every time I finish a beer, someone would turn up at the door. Here's your next beer. That's alcoholism. That's A, alcoholism, and B, would be really annoying. But that's kind kind of. That's what smart fridges do, isn't it? Smart fridges track yeah. what's in yeah. your fridge. When you run out of lettuce, I don't know, they just order a new lettuce for you. I think this is a big thing. Like, I, I know, like, uh, the way uh, technological developments are going. We're getting to a point where you shouldn't have to be inconvenienced at any point, even for like the shortest period of time. But I'm like, it's maybe okay to be like a little inconvenienced. Sometimes like, needing to do a weekly shop gets me out of the house. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think I want to get out of the house. I don't think I want to do a shop. But then as I'm out, I'm like, I'm glad I came out. I'm glad I came out. Because otherwise yeah. I was chewing in my own Yeah. Court. But if the difference is like writing on a post-it note, buy beer. Yeah. Or, or having a system <laughs> which automatically... Contacts the supermarket, purchases beer, maybe even delivers it. Maybe I'm it. trying to give up. What if I'm actually a diagnosed alcoholic mm. and I go, ah, my last beer. Now, <laughs> I'm, now, I'm, now I'm on the wagon. Warning, Chris and then Ray, you are running low on door. alcohol. Yeah, you're killing me. Yeah, <laughs> you're killing me. There's an Amazon delivery guy there. <laughs> Stuff just like, can go wrong. Is all I'm saying. Oh well, here you go, sir. Here's your beer. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> well, suddenly, like, then he gives a little kiss. Then he goes. Well, suddenly they're they're trying like those those drones. You yeah, know? yeah. Or, or even it'll fly in through your window. Yeah. This is, this is going back to what I was saying. I'll just, I'll just leave the window open for the drone. Just for the, the beer drone. He's really drunk though. Well, then, all, then all the burglars come in. <laughs> but, but like, By drone. The, the, they've, they've, not the flying ones. They've got those ones that drive. Like the ones on little Yeah, wheels. they look like a box. Like yeah, a can you imagine like, a box on wheel? Like, as you say, like, oh. <laughs> it's like an icebox. You know, 
years of drinking, but it's finally behind me. This nightmare is over. Yeah. And then it's like, ding dong. Oh, who's sure that? And this, this... <laughs> here's, your, here's your new keg. <laughs> and Kegatron is yeah. on the door. Ke- Kegatron is here for party. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you go, no. You shut no, the, Kegatron. You shut the door. But it's like. I will not take no. Ke- Ke- Kegatron cannot power down yeah. until he delivers his load. Yeah, <laughs> until, until you down it. Kegatron is down in, in one. Kegatron down in one. Has been down in to feel one. Pain. While you don't accept his delivery, so he's like, I am in pain, save me from this torment. <laughs> and then Kegatron calls in reinforcements, and then the flying drones are coming yeah. in. More Kegatrons, more flying kegs. Jesus, it's a. You just have to drink. Just drink. <laughs> just do it. Sake. Just drink instead. Who's out the a, a window? It's Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> drink, Chris! <laughs> Please. Chris, here's a beer. He's got a funnel and six foot of pipe. <laughs> My business model depends on it, Chris. Drink. <laughs> yeah. the, but the algorithm. <laughs> you shouldn't have put it on your wish list. <laughs> oh god. So that's where we'll be. Oh, that's the future. That's a that's a looking yeah. Future. And we're in the future now. We're we are. Twenty twenty is the future. So God, um, god bless. Uh, Cheers. All the best. Ooh, that was a good audio. Oh my life. I hope that shows up on the mic. Me too. Yeah, it sounded great. Right, so um, uh, I've been drinking less, believe it or not. I don't, I don't believe you. I, really, I, I, really, really, Jeff Bezos I really need this. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> I'd be drink... a sponsor by Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't drink that heavily over the festive period, particularly. Uh, no, no, not compared to previous festive periods. No, mm. I don't know why that is. It was, it was sort of you a were conscious happier. decision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I felt much, I felt much more, more healthy during it. Yeah. More, what's that word? Uh, it's kind of like um, proud. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 not no. proud. Less, Less shame. shame. Less shame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, last year I got ill directly after Christmas because awesome. I'd been drinking a lot. I'd moved house, mm. and then we hosted Christmas Day. Mm, and yes. Boxing Day, I barely knew who I was, what was going on, etc. This year, I've drunk less. I've done less. I feel better for it. Yeah, I feel, I feel all right. Happy for you. Yeah, I, I was like drinking over the Christmas period, but I never felt drunk. If no. that makes sense, and it's something like in this two weeks since or the week or whatever, I, I, I really yeah, have. Been back dry, I really work. have drunk a lot less. I felt. I've been back. A felt good week. about it. It's probably good. Just under a week. I, I felt Overall. good. I've been cycling. I've been drinking less. It's just right now, right this second. There are a lot of beers on this table. I really, <laughs> really need the drone spin. <laughs> there are a number of bottles of beer on this table. Santa, and... Santa booze has been, and uh, what but, a king's and, ransom and, we and have. Believe me, I'm going to be. I don't want Jeff to get, be penniless. He'll be. Well, this I'm is, this is all beers that is left that are left over from mm. Christmas and New Year. Oh, okay. With all the chocolates in the house. That was mostly my strategy for drinking less was to leave most of my beer in your fridge. I haven't touched it. It's great. Yeah, it's magical, it. yeah. Uh, and now it's come back to me. And now here it is. <laughs> <laughs> my, oh, my wayward son. <laughs> my multi son. Okay, well, look, there, there, there is ostensibly a format. That was our cold open. And this is episode... <laughs> Achieved. <laughs> <laughs> look, and this is episode 51. Oh, it? it's a new year. Double figures. As it's well. uh, Double it's figures. a new... At last. Oh, got there. It's a new half century. Oh, yeah. The know? second half of a hundred. Just, yeah. A legion. legion Technically, there? we've done 100 episodes now. Technically, technically, well, we're what? on second fifty. Which ah, takes up to hundred. If you round up to the nearest, if you 100. round up to the oh, nearest fifty, oh, you got to round up. <laughs> yeah, that's round up. Yeah, oh, you round yeah, up, round up to the nearest up. fifty. Yeah, hundred episodes. This is episode L I in Roman numerals. Sure, whatever. Who said L's fifty? L's fifty. That's okay. where Legionnaire comes from. Ah, uh, that's what you were saying. Oh, yeah, right. is that where Legionnaire's disease comes from? It does. Yeah, because you've got to suck on a pipe fifty times. To an L shaped pipe. An L shaped pipe. Speaking of Legionnaire's disease, I finally. Threw away my uh, drinks bottle at work because, <laughs> like, <laughs> because oh boy, <laughs> I came back after the Christmas period and uh, it's a lovely branded metal oh, bottle yeah. and I opened it and I, I looked down at the bottom and there were like these calluses maybe like on the bottom of was the it bottom? a Type Zero civilization? Had they developed like yeah. space flight? <laughs> maybe so. <yeah. laughs> and uh, I like I tried like scraping them off. Mm. And they mm. were hard. Oh god! Uh, and then I bought a purchase a Coke, probably the first time in years that I've actually purchased the black sugary stuff. And you oh. used it just to wash out your. I bottle. poured it in because I'm like that. W- I know it dissolves. <laughs> it, it kills dis- everything. It, it kills everything. It dissolves Including teeth. humans. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that just made them go black. Oh. God. So oh, I no. just chucked it. I've been drinking out of a glass, and I've been feeling much better. <laughs> so it was all about that metal bottle. Is what Maybe so. It could. It could be a factor. Well, mm. You know. Interesting. It's well, interesting, isn't it? To kickstart oh. uh, this bold new era oh. for a show called Hate, 
who... Are we going to do the same thing as we've done previously? Yeah, I, let's, thought let's, you were, let's, I thought you were boldly going to do something new <laughs> I was going to say, let's quit. Let's leave. <laughs> yeah. Let's go home. Fuck it. Um, who's got a hate? I've got, got hate. Go on. All go on, right. Yeah, yeah, all right. right. If you want. Uh, yeah, shall I get it? You, you, oh, go on then. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, I'll do yeah, it. I'll, go I'm, on, go, yeah. You know what? I'm going to do it. Do it. He's going to do it. I dare you. I hate encores. Brilliant. Say you want more. No. What? I won't. I don't want There's more. an opportunity for humour here. Uh, Perhaps for the first time in this show. Oh my god, that was almost like a perfect... We were like, we've just drawn a line. Uh, and, and he's gone like, and my first hate of a new season is... Music related. I hate encores. Should uh, we just leave it there? Yeah. Just leave it there. I thought you were getting the fact that my very first hate ever was also music related. Oh. With a disappointing drop. And now I've come back in our first, second, note. Or maybe encore is literally not your hate. It is basically the setup to the hate you're about to deliver. It's not. Oh. I hate encores. Oh. What specifically, do you, what do you hate about specifically encores at gigs. Okay, so yeah. mu- musical. That's where my mind went. Musical yeah. gigs. Okay, not the concept of doing something again or doing a bit more of something or repeating the same thing over and over again forever, forever. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> 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 um, I'm losing my desire to go to gigs generally oh. these days because I sort of get halfway through and I'm like, I'm not enjoying this. I'm stood. Is that the band or is that just your age? I, I think it's my age, oh. but it's also like really like i can listen to this band on spotify at home through really good speakers that's I, true yeah. and i know it's not the same as a live performance but i'm like crowded i can't see very yeah. well there's people bumping into me some people smell bad usually it's me yeah but other people can now smell that that me yeah and and so like halfway through the gig i'm sort of like i'm kind of done i feel like i've always felt that way about gigs yeah i'm realizing this now i'm starting to be really honest with myself I yeah think yeah a bit older. maybe that's it and i'm like I, like for example, Ali's going to Glastonbury this year, and I'm not. Fair. And I previously in my past, I would have just gone, yeah, because I'm a sort of like, yes, let's say yes rather than say no sort of person. Just say yes to the dress. Exactly. Yeah. To the dress. <laughs> yeah. But like this time, I was like, I don't really want to stand in a yeah. field. No. For like hours, and then feel tired and shit for like four days. I don't really want to do that. And, and you yes, will. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Will. I will. I will. I will feel shit. Like I might have a bit of fun here and there, but I, overall, I probably will feel shit. So we get to the end of a gig, and I'm ready to go home. Yeah. And then we like cheer. Yeah, it's the last song. Yeah, yeah. Play the song. Bibbidi. Yeah, probably quite a good song. Saved it to the last. Yeah. Brilliant. Walk off the stage, and I'm like, right, can we go then? And it's like, well, no, no one's moving. Everyone's still cheering. Come on out. Like that. And I'm like, oh, rigmarole. Okay, let's go through this then, I guess. And it might be five minutes. It might be fucking 15 minutes. I've seen a long encore before. Would you not come away disappointed, though? If you yeah. hadn't seen the uh, presumably excellent songs or memorable songs that are shoved into an encore, well, this just do them earlier. Yeah, yeah, because like, but, but, but if <laughs> any, answer. but if any band started their gig when they said they were going to and left the stage, oh, yeah, and never came back on ever again. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, a public outcry. Well, this is the thing, right? I went, I went after everything I've just said. I went yeah. to a gig recently. <laughs> oh, that's, that was it. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Yes. And the reason that, that now I'm being very picky, right? So I okay. went to see Sigrid. The um, uh, she's from Norway. Is that Norwegian? Yes. Yeah. Nordic. I I've never met Viking. Her. It could be, yeah. She's Viking. Okay. Uh, Vikings are from Norway. Like a or sort of a really, really good, like, dancey pop electro stuff. It's really, yeah. really good. And I was like, I'm going to break my rule because I want to see her live. She's probably going to be great. She came on exactly when she was scheduled oh, to come on. At, like, I think it was nine. She played for like an hour and a half. At the end, she said, this is my last song. It was her best song, in my opinion. She played it. And then she said, I'm not doing an encore. And she left. And I was like, fuck yes. yes. This was brilliant. I'm going home. Is it, is it because she's maybe 12 and had to get to bed? But maybe. She certainly looks 12. She is quite young. Yeah, yeah I think she's 22. But okay, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, well. I've never heard of this artist. Sigrid. Yeah, I don't like Look, music. No, though, the thing is, I've, I've often... You, you surprise me, Nicholas, because I've often thought of, thought of you as being a bit more... A bit more kind of like hip to cool, to hip a bit a bit cool. Yeah, well, that's the uh, you, that's the persona that's, I put out. Yeah, I was you, the old me. Of, of the three of us, I'm the cool one. I've always known you to not be the kind of person who needs a a drink to have a good time. Like you no. just go and enjoy the music. What are you trying to say? Well, I'm just saying. Um, Cheers. Well, here's well, the good. thing, though, John, <laughs> is that I take that point. I take it as a compliment. Yeah, no, it's right. Like, yeah, but. Usually, mm. that's because I can dance. Yeah. That's a well, big part of God, it. God, he can. What are you I trying mean, to say? <laughs> <laughs> so out of the three of us, I'm the dancing oh, one. Oh, <laughs> for the love of God. I mean, look, I've been saddled with old um, drunk... Old, old drunk and two left feet over here. Yeah. To be fair, Chris Ray can dance. God, I yeah. can spin. 
you can, can spin. I can do a spin. And That's you can do it. something, John. I mean, whatever it is, you everyone do, can only, do something. Only you can do it. <laughs> I can dance on my own. It's been noted that um, I cannot keep time at all. Really? But you saw my wedding dance. It I did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take that. Yeah. Yeah. Quite, yeah. Yeah. It has been noted that Lucy's pointed. Lucy is not shy. I to think point you out, understand but... a beat. You just don't move your body to it. Yeah. It's almost like you're I, obstinate. I'm about always it. on. I'm always on the offbeat. I think it's why I'm so good at martial arts. Yeah. That's what it is. You're always well, looking. You miss time it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I walk into a room drunk and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> you're lo- the thing is, you're looking for openings. Right? Yeah. So when you listen to music, you're trying to defeat it. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to take it down and god damn do you succeed because <laughs> I want to leave when you're doing that <laughs> that's why I've never been able to vanquish a gig because they come back out for an encore yeah. just just when it's like they, they walk off stage and I was like John you did it we're free we, beat, we can beat leave them. oh no they're back, oh, no, they're back. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I would argue that if I can like get a bit of a groove on there's a bit of space around oh, yeah. me I, I'm comfortable you know mm. I, I've got a drink in one hand and my friends around me and I can maybe even I don't know talk to them mm. right nice. I could probably enjoy a gig a lot more, but let's be honest, that never happens. You never go to a gig where it's comfortable. It's never comfortable at a gig. No. And yet, no. you're here to enjoy a thing. How the fuck are you supposed to enjoy something? You, all, you but, feel like shy. But, but, but I feel like what you're really describing is um, the relentless march of time and how we are all <laughs> slowing down and becoming uh, increasingly decrepit. Because yes. I agree wholeheartedly that... A, a gig is wonderful. Like, believe me, when I see Glastonbury, it got that big sea of human bodies, like jumping yes. up and down. I there's occasionally a moment, a moment of weakness, where I, where I go, oh, imagine I was there. But what I'm really it's, saying I'll, is, I'll imagine you, no, it, it's fine. But as I'm saying, like, imagine it's, it's all right. What I'm really saying is, imagine I could be there in that moment for maybe 45 minutes, the duration of that gig, and then magically teleport home. Yeah, and not have to do all the other crap. Exactly. Or be two miles from the nearest latrine. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh God. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like. Perish the thought of having like a mid gig shit. Yeah. Like that's well. I mean, you could shit not yourself. In a, not in a toilet. Mm, yeah. mm. I mean, you could get some if you actually did a shit in the middle of a gig. That would give you. You'd some probably space. have some space to dance. That's then. very true. Maybe so, that's a know, new strategy. I should think. Swing some roundabouts. Even the Sigrid gig, which ended well and was the, the Sigrid, as they say, as, as uh, was said. concise, finished quickly mm. and nicely, ended well and was over. <laughs> I, it then took me like... Ended in an orderly fashion. <laughs> yeah. Which, her, her, man, her, road, her manager runs on stage, grabs the mic. Attention everyone, the punch has been spiked. <laughs> the your, fun is over. Your parents have been called. <laughs> Sigrid, it's bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then it took us 15 minutes to get out because there's yeah. a thousand people in a space the size of my living room. You can never do anything fun or one can never do anything fun without there being some shit at the start and some shit at the end. Oh, that's Usually powerful traffic. words. I like that. Is, that. You come home from the yeah, airport. That's a, yeah. When you've been on a nice holiday, you still like drive home. No one lives near a fucking airport. For obvious reasons. Mm. And a gig, you usually get caught in traffic afterwards, no yeah. matter where you are. Stuck in crowds getting out of the venue, yeah. then stuck in traffic leaving Bristol. Because yeah. I because I, I think of like the last three gigs that I've seen. And I think mm. in, in reverse chronological order, it Go was on. Flight of the Concorks. Oh, that yeah. was good. That was, good. That was fantastic. We were down, seat, seated gig. Well, here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. You tell me. It's not stand. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, guys. There's only seats left. Oh, what a what a uh, shame. Uh, uh, oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh, I'll take seventeen tickets. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. <laughs> so we're like we are probably about. Where was that? Uh, the NEC. That was Birmingham. Yeah. Right? So we were maybe like a good furlong. We were up in the, the stage. Gods. Like we were very yes. far away. Yeah. But you can sit down. They've been very courteous. They put big screens up, so you can, it's like you're next to them. It's amazing. <laughs> it's like we're in our living room. You can um, certainly tell that they are there. Yeah. Just well, about. C- certainly blokes who look a lot like them. Yeah. But you, but you talk about like you know you can't do anything fun without wasting time at the start and at the end. We were in traffic. Yeah, like it'd be yeah, horrifying. It's, it's like Mad Max yeah. getting out of the NEC. They just go like, okay, free for all. Like yeah. off you go. Here's a burning yourself. guitar. Yeah. Like, fucking <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but seating made mm-hmm. it made it good. That's true. It made it good. Uh, then I saw the uh, National Ukulele Orchestra of Great Britain. <laughs> okay, amazing. Right, and this is where I want to make my point about encores because they uh, that was the most middle aged gig you could imagine. Certainly sounds like uh, it. I believe that. Uh, <laughs> We were the youngest people in the audience, maybe by about 30 years. Whoa. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, everyone. Um, they came on stage. They're all sitting down <clears throat> with their ukuleles. How many ukuleles were there? Uh, maybe like eight, I want to say. Oh. Well, you sat down. We were sitting there. Of course. Of course. Yeah, the bar is maybe like there. You know, waiter service is great. That's an important caveat for what I believe you're about to say. But they were amazing. Yeah. And they did an encore. Okay. And I was so glad. And I would have been so happy if they had done two, three, 
four encores, I never wanted it to end because okay. I was sitting down. But that's the I reason, isn't it? Is that you were comfortable? I was so comfortable. So like, let's let this rage on into the night. That's fine. Yeah. But if uh, like if you're stood there, oh, I just want. I feel out. like what we're talking about now <laughs> is not what most people would consider <laughs> an average gig. No. What? <laughs> See, it's what? Sitting, sitting, sitting down, down watching eight ukuleles or sitting down and watching what was really a comedy show. Yeah. <laughs> well, I also saw Pictish Trail. Okay. You, you came I along with me, Chris Ray. Yeah. So that, was, that was a act. small, intimate affair. Yes. And, and it, he was only opening. So really, he only did half an hour. So it was a very... So he couldn't do an encore? No, I wish he had. He was very, very good. I very right. much enjoy his music, and I think he's a talented man. Br- br- great. It was a very <laughs> sticky floor. It was an astonishingly sticky floor. That's something really I don't sticky. like either. To the point where I do feel they were cultivating mm. the stickiness. Kind of like the bottom of your water bottle. But I suppose at some point, you're just spreading the stickiness around if you try to clean it. Yeah. What can you do well, in that how do you, how do you lift it? But also, like, any form of cleaning would presumably obliterate that stickiness wow. I don't, I don't like know. how are they you're asking the wrong when it guy, reaches a honest. point when it reaches i've been a cleaner and i can tell you that we as cleaners just give up after just a while do yeah. not care. just don't care <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'll tell you what my supervisor once said he was like if you can't be asked mate just, just spray a load of polish in the air and when the client comes in they'll think it's clean he literally said those words to me he started it with if you can't be asked mate that was what he said sounds like a good manager he was great but yeah. it's so true that's so <laughs> profound i've worked as a cleaner and Everybody who gives you training on that job, it's just like, yeah, you're a cleaner. Yeah. Yeah, you know what a mop is. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was also the same man who was like, uh, right, I'm going to need you to scrub these taps. I want you to use bleach, a uh, mix of water to, to scrub the taps down. I was like, oh, cool. Do I get gloves? He was like, gloves? Gloves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Goodbye, skin, I guess. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. <laughs> Takes a swig from his... Uh... <laughs> Is Mr. Muscle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I look at his hands and he has no fingerprints. I'm like, oh, I see. <laughs> Fucking master criminal. Um, I do agree that an encore is maybe a cheap psychological ploy to make you feel something. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Because it's like, I think maybe, I, I feel like the origin of the encore was a thousand years ago. A bard in medieval times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that many who's playing there? green sleeves? Yeah, he's there Why singing, singing some song. And then he's like, Great, I'm done. I'm dying leaving. of rickets. Yeah. <laughs> just dying of rickets. <laughs> leaves leaves the tavern and everyone in there is like, you know what, that was fucking good actually. Yeah. Let's cheer until he comes back. Yeah. And this has never been done before, but they never loved, been done. They loved the bard so much. You're like, Ooh, and he's halfway down the road. You can hear this coming yeah. from the tavern. He's like, Oh yeah, I'll go back, I'll do another song for him because they seem really nice. And he goes back in, they're like, hey, he's back uh, and then he, you know, and he dies of Rick yeah. there and then. Because I can imagine, like, if I if 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 I were on stage doing anything mm. and, and the crowd hadn't booed me off, I'd be ex- I'd It'd be, be intoxicated. Ecstatic. And then when I do leave, you'd be like, oh if no. They'd cheer, I'd I'd come back out. They yeah. want more. Yeah. But I think it developed from that. Into in the early days when it was like a genuine, you could call someone back, and and maybe there were times when they didn't get the cheers, so they didn't come back. Yeah, it was dependent. <laughs> they just they read the room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, read the room. <laughs> that should be the point, right? Yeah, it's like a forced encore now, though. Yeah, yeah now it's, it's just expected. a thing. You're expected, and, and sometimes you get double. You get yeah. two, two. And, and this happens and if you're at a gig and you there would be an encore, let's say, but it's so shit and it's so poorly received. That the encore doesn't happen and you miss out on like say two three of the main songs oh. then what has that ever happened it is, well it, that's probably because they were shit it is yeah, a bit of a problem it is a problem but then you were, you only came let's say for those two or three songs yeah maybe and, and that's why it's so also, poorly received and as you said and when you know when they know when the band know we got this whole song and dance about the encore yeah. and they're like well we gotta save the hits let's play the new stuff first and yeah. i was like oh, god just, just boo. And it's like yeah boo and yeah, so the first yeah. half of the, the gig is shit and then everyone isn't cheering so yeah. then the act think oh fuck they don't like us and it's all just spiraling yeah. down free bird <laughs> with the Beatles <laughs> yeah but you're right and then but so, now it means that a band has to say like Sigrid had to say she wasn't doing encore because otherwise she'd have left the stage and everyone would have been like yeah. come on out Sigrid and she wouldn't have been coming out that's exactly how they'd have been yeah, yeah. And it sounds like that kind of crowd and she'd have been sat yeah they really were yeah it was all that <laughs> um, she'd be sat in the green room like getting increasingly embarrassed and anxious about the fact that she has no songs now prepared because yeah. she wasn't going to do it yeah. more, but and maybe that audience out. would never leave maybe they would never leave no they're still there yeah it does seem exactly. weird that someone had to say they weren't doing an encore yeah it's the only way I I'm kind think, of yeah. coming round to this actually like at yeah. first I was like no I think it's sometimes like I if I, if it's genuinely wonderful 
you know, and if we can ignore the fact that you're covered in sweat and shit and probably some piss that maybe, someone's still in your car. Yeah, hopefully yours, you know, God <laughs> hopefully, willing. but probably not. Uh, and it's, you know, sweaty and everything. It's horrible. If you can ignore all of that. So you've got a comfy chair. The music's great. You love these people. Like coffee chair, but still covered in piss. That'd yeah, like, still, still covered in piss. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd take that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay, that would yeah. be a step up. Fair, yeah. fair. Uh, uh, and, and you just don't want that moment to end. Yeah. Like in that perfect moment, if there's an encore, I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, they're going. I'm like a baby. It's like that kind of ob obje agree. object permanence yeah. where if something, something, <laughs> something like moves out of sight, you forget it exists. <laughs> and you're like, oh, what happened? That was amazing. Oh, here I am. Oh, oh they're back. Oh, oh. And like the excitement is, is constant. That's great. Mm. But they're playing with me. They're, they're toying with my emotions. They could just do a two-hour yeah. amazing set rather than like an hour and a half. They or... always knew they were going to come back out after yeah. 15 minutes of waiting. So why did they not just do that song earlier? Save us the fucking bother. Deception. Mm. That's what it is. Mm. Plain deception. Is it so the band can get a drink very quickly? Drink. Well, mind you, they drink I, on stage I think, nowadays. I've they? had a theory that the reason is... is <laughs> nowadays. <that> nowadays. <laughs> it's a way to assess whether or not the gig has gone really well. Like, they've been playing, so they've been playing louder yeah. than the crowd, generally. Yeah. But but you're right, it'd be horrible, as, as Rayman yeah. said, it'd be horrible to end on... And everyone just walks out. <laughs> some, ...some just album track. And then, um, and then you walk out thinking, oh, I've not seen the songs I essentially came to see, for certain bands, at least. I just think... I think that you can make a thing... Very good. I think you can make something great by being concise about it mm. like i think if something mm. starts strong and ends well and doesn't take too long over it those are always going to be better yeah. things if if something can end well then you're going to come out of it positive whereas if something dribbles out and extends over a period of time then you're going to come out a little bit annoyed and a little bit aching and a little bit frustrated and then you're going to get in your car and then there's going to be a traffic jam and you're like fuck this and i came out of sigrid and i wasn't a traffic jam but i wasn't pissed off yeah. Because the gig had lasted ended at uh, ended, it wasn't PM, that long. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was, maybe early. <laughs> in, your, in, your, in your mind, you had already allocated this time for traffic jams. Yeah. yeah. I came about a cup of tea, put my feet up. <laughs> Glastonbury, to be fair, is very organised when it comes to time. It says, That's true, it has to be. This is the 45 minute set, and it, it's spot on, it to is. be fair. It is. 45 minutes is quite short in the grand scheme it of things. It is, but that is, that is, that is one usually how long an act is on for at Glastonbury. It'll be the headliners that have a longer set. Again. But also, I guess you've paid to get into the festival, so forty-five minutes of like a hundred bands is not yeah, exactly. bad. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, well, the yeah. best, the best gig in Verticals I've been to was at Glastonbury. Oh, Lionel Richie. Oh yeah, it oh yeah, fucking brilliant. <laughs> I'm not being sarcastic. It was amazing. I can believe that. Yeah. I. It was. He was singing "Easy Like a Sunday Morning," and it, it, it was lunchtime actually. But it was. <laughs> it, was <laughs> it was a Sunday. It's fa actually inaccurate. Yeah. Like. It was a beautiful day on a Sunday, and it was just like fucking hell. This is this is great. Yeah, this is sounds, really, really great. That sounds very good. Uh, he did all night long, didn't all he? night long, oh, dancing on the ceiling, oh, brick house. Oh my god, that sounds been, like, he's got some bad. That sounds like amazing, Richie. actually. There's yeah. been a few times where, uh, like, particularly at gigs, like festival gigs, you you can maybe it's in the middle of the day and mm. and it's not crazy packed because it's not like arts yeah, or something. It depends where you stand because you get a good view anywhere as well. Though. Yeah, because so. I remember Ali and I did Glastonbury once, and it was like the Sunday night, and Beyonce was the headliner. Yeah, and like I wasn't crazy excited about Beyonce. I crazy was crazy in love. In love. No, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> come on, you were just ahead. Come on. Um, uh, but so we were in the big mix in the crowd but there was this sort of hillock near where yeah, our camp yeah. was and we were just lying on there it was a warm evening you know stars were out and in the distance there was Beyonce screaming at us the yeah. biggest star the biggest stage image, yeah, yeah had collapsed into the ground <laughs> and yeah and it was like this is cool this is cool this is yeah. nice was that the Glasgow where you were working in the garbage tent that wasn't that one actually. right okay uh, now I can imagine that made it a better experience yeah that yeah. was one of the that may be the worst experience of my life and I've broken my spine <laughs> <laughs> Working in that garbage tent. It, oh. Okay, snap, um, snap <laughs> quiz. Worst experience of your life. Okay, working in the garbage tent at Glastonbury. Okay, yeah. uh, getting food poisoning in Peru and having to take a fourteen-hour bus journey. And then shitting in the wilderness. Yeah. <laughs> um, worst experience of my life. This is perfect for a hate. Uh, program. yeah. Um, I don't know. We can come back to it's, you. It's sort of all going to be alcohol-related. Well, well, by the time you had to sleep in a bathroom. But cube. I was asleep. That's true, you were asleep. <laughs> so I was fine. And it was a great moment for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I, yeah, would, I wouldn't call that the worst experience of my life. Okay, well, just think about it. Well, clearly you've lived a charmed Let's life. Let's do another hate. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's all about. just terrible. <laughs> we've spent a lot of time on my hate. So we Sorry, to... uh, I've got hate. Go, yeah, on. go on. Go on then. I hate in movies oh. uh, or TV where uh, Americans 
are pretending to be British, but with the caveat of it's not the accent. Oh. It's oh. the things they say. Oh, okay. So I'm blaming the script writers. Sure. Are these inaccuracies you're, really, you're no, I mean more, alluding to? It's not, well, no, it's, it's not like uh, someone going like, oh, cool, blimey, uh, <laughs> King King Elizabeth, oh, you know. No, that's just factually inaccurate. That was, yeah, that, I mean, there's lots wrong with that. What really annoys me are fake British idioms, or rather hack screenwriters going... What do British people say on a daily basis? How can we make this more British? Yeah. So I've just watched, uh, Lucy and I recently watched uh, the new Hellboy movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, there's a subtitle. I can't even remember. The Hellboy reboot. Hellboy. He's from He's hell. Fr yeah, that's it. He's it's, from... it's hell, but the two L's are Wong, so it's like... Really? No. So it's uh, like... Uh, he, 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 one, one. He, so it's like hell two, two, hell, hell two boy. Yeah. Hell, to, hell to leather. Two hell two boy. Yes, that's um, it. That's the one. We got it. And um, it's set in Britain. Oh, great. For some inexplicable reason. Is the comic not? Bits of... Yeah, yeah but it's yeah, based anyway. on like five different Hellboy that's, stories, that's I think. That's true. It's very, oh, what the film is. Yeah, there's oh, a lot shit. going on. Um, and this one character pops up mm. and kind of out of the blue because the script's kind of like all over the place. And she's uh, she's British, ain't she? Hey! I think I know which actress this is. Is this the Coronation Street actress? EastEnders. EastEnders. I think she's. I think there was a so Did she have short white hair? No, no, she is in it. Yeah, that that I saw her in the yeah, trailer. Yeah. yeah, in the trailer. Yeah. No, uh, it's this. It's Layla this Morse is the young, actress's name. younger lady. She is American. I looked her up afterwards because she was so bad. Like, oh. she was so bad in this movie. And we looked her up, and um, apparently she is quite an acclaimed American actress. Oh. She was in, like, a, a no, uh, some award-nominated movie. Great. British. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> bucket of thumbs. <laughs> British is not her native tongue. Like, she speaks American. And it's not so much that she put an English accent on. I thought she put a passable British accent on. Yeah, like we do. But it's like the first, <laughs> but it's the first thing out of her mouth is literally like, "Oh, stone the crows! Oh, no. You look like you've been through the ringer, and that's no mistake, you know." <laughs> and it's governor. like, governor. <laughs> and at one point she says, "You look like you could use a right old English breakfast." No one no in the one history said, yeah. of the of the world has ever said nobody those words no in that combination. Yeah, ever said that ever. No. And as another example, I'd like to bring up uh, the movie V for Vendetta. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, which of course Hugo Weaving, Hugo Weaving, Natalie, Hugo. Natalie Portman, made by Americans, uh -huh. set the Wachowskis. in Bro Wachowskis. Was it? Set, yes, yeah. incredibly. Yeah. Like yes, incredibly. Yes, after after um, um, maybe after the Matrix or before Speed Racer. Fucking Speed Racer. Love but <laughs> the one guy who saw Speed <laughs> Racer. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> but there's a bit in that. I, I think the moment I instantly went off that that movie was I was in the cinema watching it. I was quite excited about it. Yeah, I bet. And there's a bit where uh, V. The or uh, the uh, terrorist, Moro, whatever his name is, he does a an address. He hijacks the BBC or whatever. He does an address to the British people, and bear in mind the British people have never seen this guy before. Sure, and he does this whole talk about how I, in a year's time I'll blow up the Houses of Parliament to oh, make a point, shit. and um, and, that, and then and then he he gets off the air, and, and then the government, the fascist government, reassert control, and they go like, uh, oh, uh, pl please ignore everything that man said. Uh, he was merely a terrorist, and uh, it was all lies. And this little girl, this little girl who's been watching the TV, just stands up and goes, bollocks, and walks out the room. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> and, and it, just, it pissed me off so much, because I'm like, I, I get that you've done the research. No, the bare minimum of research. You Googled it. Yeah. Well, it's essentially a word that English people say that Americans don't. You look at yeah, a Wikipedia they, article for British words. I, I have said bollocks before. Oh, bollocks, you have. Yeah, yes, bollocks, I, bollocks yes, to it. yes. But, it, so on. but it's lazy, isn't it? It's yes, like, it is. I, um, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 It's hack screenwriting. Yeah. More. I don't want to blame the actors, because they're trying. And it's, this isn't about bad accents. No, no, no. It's just that, that is a problem, though. That is also a problem. It's just this cheap shorthand, where it'd be like, it'd be like writing like a, a French character who cannot help but say, je ne sais quoi, <laughs> like all the time. <laughs> yeah. Or a certain Jack Chirac, you know. <laughs> or all they can talk about are garlic. It is garlic, yeah, you know. It's stereotyping, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's and it's garlic. the fact that like you can picture it. It's like, oh, here's our here's our hot hot young heroine and she's British and she's gonna meet the action star soon and they're gonna team up and they're gonna bring down that terrorist attack to to, you know, steal the Queen's orb and scepter or something like that, you know. <laughs> 
but there'll be that scene where she's at home with her like mother and you know what it'll be like he goes oh welcome home love oh did you have fun in the big smoke <laughs> oh have some, oh, have some obnobs and a cup of tea <laughs> oh you know have some beef wellington <laughs> yes it's not so much that you've got bangers, the, and, mash. The bangers and mash but that is what people who don't live at? in england think we're like well that's the bigger problem yeah that's what people I'm, think we're like i'm not sure anyone really thinks that but they... someone must I think it's, it's just like Johnson's like is lazy. Yeah. Like yeah. it's like it's like it's oh, I don't know what it's like. I can't think of an example. It's but like I don't know. It's like if if, if you I... asked that writer who said what was the Hellboy line again? The, oh, it was um, like you look like you could use, no, you uh, could use uh, an English uh, a good old English breakfast. If you asked the writer who wrote <laughs> that line, do you think someone would say that? He'd be like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it's like in Ca say you're in Canada and you see some Canadian geese. You don't go, there's some Canadian geese. You just go, there's some geese. Yeah, exactly, you know, yeah. you don't go. <laughs> you <are. laughs> you know, you I know someone who will go to a Chinese restaurant, and I won't say who it is. I will. Um, <laughs> of course. Goes, will. Oh, hi. Yeah. I can already imagine who. I, I know think I know who this about. is. Yeah. Hi, can I have some Chinese chips, please? Chinese chips. That's what he goes in and says. Oh, yeah, can I have some Chinese chips? And please? what does he think he means? <laughs> well, the thing is, I think he thinks that chi chips from a Chinese restaurant are different. Are different. But Fuck. but by by virtue of being served in a Chinese restaurant, you don't need to. Yeah. You don't Just need that chips. prefix. Just say chips. What are they going to do? They're going to go out and get some English chips <laughs> if you don't say Chinese. I want them from the English restaurant. <laughs> Strange. Yeah, but it would be like me trying to write say a cowboy movie mm. and yeehaw yeah, yeah yeah yeehaw like literally everyone's like yeehaw Better all the time lasso. yeah or oh, i don't know that's maybe not quite as bad because yeah. like, they, they do talk like that <laughs> they don't do they they lasso. do talk like that I mean, everyone needs a lasso but does an actual <laughs> cowboy say yeehaw i imagine that's a cliche well, maybe in, con in, in context he would say like Go, yeah. I, I'm certain there are contexts in which a British person might use the words English breakfast. You know what? That, you can improve that line infinitely by saying, you know what you need is a fried breakfast. Yeah. You would say a full English. Or you might say, because that's Wouldn't the you? name for it. That's, so that is but even then, if you didn't want to like fucking lampshade the fact she's English, you know, just like yeah. drive the point home, which I, if I was writing that, would think that's a little on the nose. You know, I might say fried breakfast. Yes. Because that is the kind of thing you'd say to someone if they had a hangover or had the mm. shit kicked out of them or something. You might say, you need a fried breakfast, mate. It's yeah. still a little but bit English of a stretch, but it's better. English person would say full English. They wouldn't say breakfast. Yeah, you yeah. need full English. You need, you look but like then you the worry is English. now, in that situation, is that Americans don't know what the fuck well, you are. Well, that's the problem. Uh, you're right. They need to educate themselves. But also, if you, <laughs> if you were <laughs> cooking, if you were yeah, cooking at home. home, though, mm. if you run a cafe, you might say... Full English. Yeah. But if you're like cooking at home, I say, you want some bacon? Yeah. You some know. Bacon and eggs. Yeah, but then you could say that for any meal. You want some eggs and bakey? Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey, motherfucking. Hey, 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 I just. Hey, hey, He's up, Mother Brown. Bowler at Westminster Abbey. What? <laughs> <laughs> Policeman's at. Policeman's at. Got a nipple on top. Policeman's at. That's what we say. <laughs> yeah, we do, yeah, we do say that. I think. Big Ben. If, John Major. No, all right. If we could if we could just get back on topic for. Woo! Washboard band. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, bullseyes wrapped in brown paper. Oh, <laughs> it's just like oh Jesus Christ. Oh, imperial system. Oh, it's like there was enough in, in that movie to feel embarrassed about without mm, without uh, forcing that. all that in. <laughs> it's like we get it. The movie's set in Britain. But also, like, you... like, why does it matter? Like, she can be British without us needing to, like, no, she's fucking British. She have an Brit English accent. What did it add to the story that she was British? Was it important? Well... Was she the spirit of Big Ben? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean... She just... She was in a council estate, like, in... in Just, just in Britain. We know he's in Britain. Mm. There was a whole line about, we're going to Britain. Did it say which city in Britain? Oh, okay, that's like, very vague. We're going to like, Britain. It was like Essex Witch or something like that. Essex, yeah, Essex. <laughs> Shit old shire. Norwich Stun. Norwich Stun. Upon Glauben. Thames. Oh. <laughs> no, it was. It just. You know, I really. Grind your gears. Jenna's my marbles. Mm. It was the just... worst English accent, I feel, just to extend upon your point, is in Fraser. Do you remember when Daphne's ex boyfriend oh turned God. up in Fraser? And he was clearly American. What was that? 
It was astonishing. Like, hello, you look very nice today. Um, I'm Parker hello. from Thunderbirds. Hello, Daphne. I often, when strange. I was watching Fraser, I'd often think that Daphne had a really shit accent. Well, but then she actually is English. Though, she is English, she? but she's from Sussex. Right. They made the character from Manchester. So she had to put an so accent So that's not her actual voice. Uh, but I don't really think she sounds like a, a Mancunian. Uh, no, not really. She doesn't... She it's, just... it's, it's vague enough that Americans can understand. I mean, it's broad. It's so it? clear yeah. that she's not comfortable with her voice. No. But she, uh, but she actually speaks like quite a lot differently. I do wonder what we sound like to like to anyone else. Because well, when we were in Canada, yeah. when I came to visit you in Canada, I remember your friends asking us to say certain phrases. Well, I remember... And I refused. The thing is, like, if, say, say you're American. Say you're American. You know that Britain has this incredibly dense collection of different accents and stuff. In a very... Do you know that, though? I reckon you do, because Cockney, people must know the I think Cockneys. Think Cockney, but though. you've got Cockney, they know the Queen... You know, oh, you, you know, you're basically your Hugh Grant, yeah, or, true, that's true. or your um, so Dick Van Dyke. You know, they, yeah, they might know Northern, I guess, as well. You know, they Dick know, Van Dyke's not English. No, but but you know what I mean. But he was doing, he was yeah. doing, Cockney. yeah, and they know Badly. what they know what the Beatles sound like. Yeah. So, yeah. so, but when you get somewhere like Cheltenham, Cheltenham's not sexy. No one knows where Cheltenham is. What is our? What is Cheltenham? Actually? Well, they say that Cheltenham and, and Gloucester Centre have quite neutral accents like proper everyone always tells me i don't have an accent yeah it's the thing mm. it's like uh, if you go out into say gloucester sure <gasps> that's the old south, old, south gloucester that's yeah. the old like uh, ooh are ooh are oh, kind of, yeah, of, yeah kind of like south you know western, farmer so, yeah. kind of thing maybe a little bit pirate maybe as a, pirate well, a little element. bit pirate further yeah. south you get the more bristolian people sound yes in well how do bristolians sound Somewhere hello south. hello hello, I hello from bristol me. Get on my chatter. Well, that just sounds like a farmer to me. That yeah. sounds like Somerset. But that's a Devonshire yeah. farmer. But it's getting and... that way. The yeah. South you it's go. southwest. It's a southwest yeah. accent. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so yeah, so you get that kind of farmery kind of thing. And then Cheltenham and Central Gloucester. Hmm. I've always I've always been told, because my, my, my mom always said, growing up, she said that me and my brother, we would drop our T's. So when we were saying, like, bottle, we say bottle. We say bottle. Bottle. bottle, you know, it's kind of like dro- like that's um, a thing. Uh, well, I don't know. Apparently, like just kind of like run, like speed through things. So when you, yeah. if we when we go to America, when we go to ca- Canada or something like that, how do we sound? Because we're clearly not Cockneys. No, we're clearly not Queens English. Maybe that's why. Because when I was in America, they asked me to say things as well. And yeah. I think maybe that's why because maybe they've heard Hugh generic. Grant, the Queen, and the Beatles yeah. speak, and that's it. And Daphne from Frasier, that's all they've heard. <laughs> and so they're like, talk, because this is real British. Well, I, I used to <laughs> I used to work in a in a Starbucks in Canada. And um, the manager had me, because we used to have like a call and response kind of thing. Okay. So if you were on the counter and someone gives you an order, you'd uh, then go shout to the, the people making the drink. Double tall macchiata. Yeah, exactly. You go like, you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, English. <laughs> uh, venti decaf. There was like a, a, a code to how you'd get sure, the things okay. across. If I got half the orders you got working in that coffee shop, I'd have just left. Well, <laughs> well, when I worked in, Cal- when I worked in Calgary, we, sold, we served a, th- I used to start a, Five or six a.m. It was, Yikes. and finished about like two p.m. But we served a thousand people before midday, wow. every that is, day. That is mental. That's a lot of coffee. It was pretty hellish, actually. Mm. And but yeah, but but people used to ask me saying, "Where are you from?" And they say like, "Are you German?" We German, German really? Before, yeah. uh, South African? Whoa. Are you Australian? Like people just yeah, couldn't. Australian in Canada. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. I think that that answers it really. Then doesn't, doesn't it? Seem like, to place they it, don't yeah. know this accent at all. You should have just offered them a full English breakfast. Because when we went to America like a <laughs> year before last, people say, oh, where are you from? And I thought they meant, where in England? Yeah, they and knew I you said, were English. I said, oh, I'm about two hours outside of London. Yeah. England. <laughs> and I had to actually say, <laughs> and then I well, just went, England. Yeah, the English. Oh, language. right, okay. Well, there's a very fun story, which I won't recount in full here, oh. where when I was in Calgary, with our good friend Rich Holton, mm. uh, I swallowed a cocktail stick, oh, God. which got stuck in my Not throat. That story. And when we went to A and E, or their equivalent thereof, E and A, the emergency room, yeah, the uh, emergency the, room, the, the emergency room. Everybody uh, just walk inside. Hey, I want a coffee. Hey, I want a I'm, coffee. I'm doctoring here. <laughs> hey, buddy, I'm doctoring. <laughs> we're but, now guilty of. Um, oh, we're doing it. Oh no! Oh shit! Yeah. Um, okay. But when we went to casualty or whatever, uh, and they were saying like, okay, I had to fill in a form, and they were like, okay, so where are you from? And I said, well, 
England, obviously, and we were like, okay, well, what town? And I said, okay, well, Gloucester. Gloucester. Uh, and they were like, and I and she was just uh, her pen was hovering <laughs> over like, the form. Is that a G? <laughs> and I was like, and she's like, I was like, Gloucester. And yeah. I swear to God, she wrote Glasgow. She said, okay, and just wrote Glasgow and left it at that. I mean, I feel like I know a fair amount of American cities. Is Gloucester famous enough? Like, you know. No. The thing is, they would, they would misspell it. I think that's a Gloucester in America. There's a, no, there's a Michael Gloucester. Jackson song about Gloucestershire. Really? Uh, it was never released. They what? found it since he died, yeah. Um, what? And he mispronounces it. What? In the song. Yeah. Look it up. Okay. Seriously. It sounds like a joke. He, no, he used to, because he went, he went, he spent time in Exeter and places like that, definitely, because he knew Uri Geller. All oh. sorts of weird shit. Oh my God. And he, he apparently visited Gloucestershire. He loved it so much. He wrote a song about it, but he mispronounced, he called it like Gloucestershire well, in the song. Well, we joke, I mean, like, uh, obviously Leicester. That's a classic one. Leicestershire. Le- uh, Worcester. Worcestershire. Wor- Worcestershire. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eng- England's really weird. Yes, yeah, I do. Have... Yeah, let's move on. I do have a hate. <laughs> Fast eaters. Oh. Oh. That is to say people who eat fast okay. or quickly. Just want to say, I'm 100% with you already. Yeah. I, well, need, I need some more. I need The problem is, I've been defined as a slow eater and a fast eater. So it's relative, really. Okay. Sure. But in my eyes, fast eaters, they just wolf down their food. Oh, no, 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 no. So you're not getting any conversation out of them when you're having dinner or anything. Yeah, yeah. They're just wolfing it down. Bad table manners. And then when they're done, about while well, you're say let's say a third or halfway through, they just go, "Oh, that was delicious!" And then they look at yours, <laughs> they watch you eat, and you're thinking, <laughs> with hungry eyes, <laughs> just going, "Well, I mean, I'm still eating, and I've been sort of talking." So back off. And then they start going, "Oh, you're going to eat that?" Yeah, of course I am. I, yeah, I am going to eat that. I'm literally still this eating. Feels like, I feel like this is coming from one very particular yeah, traumatic incident. You were hurt. In your life. Well, a number of who a hurt you? Of, yeah, yeah, who hurt you? I won't name them. I will. <laughs> um, let's let's call him Andrew J. Okay. No, 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 Mr. Jolly. Let's say A Jolly. <laughs> <laughs> Who, when we lived in different halls at university, used to just say, "God, you're a slow eater." No, I'm not. I'm not a slow I'm eater. I'm just slower than you. You're just insanely quick. And then, oh, you're gonna eat that? Yeah. I, no, I am. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> literally talking to someone at the moment. <laughs> Wood of his knife and fork still in my hand. <laughs> he came to my flat once. This is true story. He came to my flat once. He knew I was eating. He came with a fork. His own <laughs> fork from his own flat. And I'm at my, I'm at my table. This man's a genius. He walks into my kitchen. <laughs> this man's a monster. He yeah. walks into my kitchen with a fork from his own flat and goes, is that mash? And leans <laughs> over me. Onto your plate. scoop up my mash. Yes, it is. It's my mash. <laughs> I'm still eating it. It is mine. He needed his dinner on the way to your house. So right. that's what's triggered me, clearly. Clearly. But do, now I just think about it a lot. I feel like when someone says to me, you're a fast eater, well, I don't think I am, particularly. Yeah. The thing is, everything you've been saying, I don't know that I don't do that. I have a really bad feeling I might do this. But do you normally, <laughs> do you think you finish before everyone else does, usually? Or do you feel like you don't talk while you eat? You just wolf it down? I feel like... I swear those people can't chew properly either. I feel I've, I feel I've eaten enough with both of you. That I would not accuse either of okay, you of this problem. I, I I would need to be told by someone else. No, too. but it but but I I I am I feel like I'm an average yeah taste eater. I, I actually I agree with you so much. It hurts right now because it, it 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 annoys me <laughs> in an irrational way. I don't think food I've ever nice. seen this. That's the thing as well. Yeah, food is nice. It's in, I enjoy fucking it. love food. Yeah, yeah. But when but when people like in. Golf it like like, like, <laughs> like um, a white blood yeah cell. <laughs> like like the waiter loses a finger you know yeah. and it's like and they go and then it's over in like two minutes yeah why and I'm you, like that you wouldn't want that there's yeah no enjoyment out of that there's did, no did oh I had this chew? great meal the other day yeah you don't you just wolf down food for sustenance I mean I do have a big thing about eating my food when it's hot. Like I, I do not well. like food going even slightly lukewarm. The table turns against Nick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I, I disagree. <laughs> okay. And I'll tell you why. Tell me why. I love cooked food that has been refrigerated and to pick it up the day after or like a couple of hours food. later. And I'm, I'm talking pretty much all the foods here. I know pizza is obviously a very popular example of that. And I'm, I'm like, I like pizza. But I, yeah. <laughs> New Year's Eve, I cooked you guys sausage and mash. You certainly did. On New Year's Eve. Delightful. There was some mash left. Okay. A fistful of mash, let's say. I went back Besides and I had that. a baby's head. I went back and I had that the morning after. I thought, that's delicious. I love that. But that, but you see, that is after you've had your hot meal. 
Yeah. That, that was all I wouldn't, good I wouldn't cook something to yeah. then refrigerate it. No, no, no. Exactly. I would have leftovers, exactly. let's say. But yeah. I just think some food tastes great. Oh, it does. Yeah. It, oh, yeah, it, no, it's, it's, true. A, it's yeah. a flavor but, sensation. But I get it infuriated goes... if I, like, say I'm riding a friend's house or something and they mm. order takeaway. And the takeaway arrives at the door. They come in with the bags and they put it on the counter. And then they go, does anyone want a drink? I'm like, it's fucking right there. Yeah. And every second, we're losing energy we're losing to the atmosphere. Heat. From that. <laughs> You're killing me. Yeah, put yeah. that on a plate now. I think it's like, but well, then you're eating with people. You have a, but you I don't think... suddenly stop talking just to go. Rawr, 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 yeah, no. yeah. No, this, I don't. I don't do that. Because that's do the thing. That. Like, I, I feel people will naturally eat at different rates. That's, that's fine. fine. That's I have fine. no issue with no, that. No, no. I, I, Especially I, if you've been talking more. Yeah, and you might yeah, slower. Exactly. Yeah. People eat at different rates, but I feel at the same time there is maybe like a statistically measurable uh, average consumption rate of of going like get a sip of my drink. Talk a bit, yeah. have a mouthful, have sure. another mouthful. It's sure. nice. So when, but I agree with you. When you put a meal down on a table and someone just goes like, horror, and, and, and like it dis, it disappears, like it disappears. That's not natural. That is a learned, <laughs> yeah. bad and behavior. And then they have the gall to tell you, oh, you're eating very slowly. No, I'm not. I'm I not. think I'm just being polite and I'm enjoying my food. I think if I was sat at Back a table, off. I've never noticed this before in my life, and I'm going to look for you it You will now. now. Yeah, I will now. Because I've been so triggered by what happened 10 years ago that I just noticed these yeah, things now. Yeah, and that's yeah. probably part of the problem. But yeah. I think if someone just finished their food really quickly and that was the end of their sins, then I think I'd be all right with that. Yeah. But I think if it developed into, are you eating that and staring at my food, then there but would be just, a table turning. It's just very awkward them. when someone's just sitting there what, doing nothing yeah. while you're eating. I guess, that's I guess. weird. Yeah. That's weird. And I, 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 I'm loath to keep bringing up better podcasts than ours, but there is... It's I, inevitable. They've yeah. talked about a similar issue on My Brother, My Brother oh, and Me. And they I didn't know that. Just well, they bring that. up this thing, and, and Travis points out that he says he has this problem because he cannot control himself, and so yes. he orders twice as much as everyone else well, to so slow that. him down. At least he's aware of it. And he The said, same person who triggered me initially used to do that oh my god and that made me angry yeah. and this is making me angry yeah. as well and if he listens he should be ashamed of himself well, i'll make sure he listens to this yeah <laughs> it, he went down he would go down to the chippy which was around the corner this is while i was at university obviously right and he'd come back with two separate boxes of the same thing for himself just, yeah oh yeah. yeah but i mean and he can't deny any of this just because you can eat fast doesn't mean you can eat twice as much like yeah you got to treat I, your stomach, see? Yeah. I guess I, if you eat fast enough, your body doesn't know. To some extent, and this maybe says more about me than anyone else, but this, I feel the same anger, <laughs> the same irrational anger yes. about people who eat like that that I feel about people who will not wake up in the mornings. <laughs> 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 Keep saying like, oh, whatever do you mean? I'm Joe? not a morning person. People go like, oh, I can't help myself. I'm just not a morning person. <laughs> oh, I can't help oh. myself. I just breathing food without chewing it. <laughs> like, yes, you can. You're an adult. <laughs> you have the power to make meaningful changes in your life. Just eat slower. You'll enjoy it more. Yeah. Have a drink. Very, it's very strange behavior because I've never met a polite, <laughs> fast eater. <laughs> Okay, putting Till... Andrew Jolly seriously on blast now. Oh, oh, say his name. Oh, oh no! no! <laughs> he, I've told him this. He knows this. But it's manners. It's just yeah. don't... I think it's right. like I think it is manners. People. I think it's, it's the kind of manners that you don't expect to have to teach someone. No. But when you then see it out in the wild, you're like, what happened to you? Has he come from like an environment where if he doesn't eat <laughs> if you quickly... Don't eat, if you don't eat quickly, you don't eat at all. He was one yeah. of 37 siblings yeah. who lived in a barn. He was and raised <laughs> by wolves. He <laughs> <30 laughs> served in a trough. I should use the caveat. He killed that... 10 of his brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Ate them. <laughs> we, got yeah, too, too. we got too close. <laughs> he's better than he was in that he doesn't steal my food unless it's offered to him. Okay, anymore. that's great, yeah. But he still eats quickly. Next time I see him, I'm going to ask him if he has a fork in his pocket. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just in case. Well, that he will back me up on that. He won't even deny that because he can't. <laughs> no, he turned he's... up in my flat with his own fork. That is because he knew I was eating. That is the highest level example of this I've, yeah. I've ever even imagined. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. I can appreciate the efficiency of carrying your own fork. It's like carrying your own straw, which we have to do these days. Yeah. But it wasn't that he was carrying it around with him. Oh, no, he had it for a very he specific reason. to come and steal my food. Because he knew you'd be taking fucking ages over it. <laughs> but he wasn't even there! From his he wasn't even there to see how long I was taking. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. You're so slow. 
You're so and, and someone has to eat it. I'm and, an and, average <laughs> pace eater. And, but people have said to me, "Oh, you're a fast eater." Well, I'm not really. And you're a slow eater. Well, I'm not really. The thing is, like, I, I'm really not. But it's like, you, you know, Nick, you 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 were feeling a bit self conscious. You were saying like, you know, do I do this? Yeah. And, I, and I and I and I know that you love meat. I know that you. <laughs> I know that you love. Sausages, and I know that Rats you should have pastry casing, and I know that you love large quantities. Oh yeah, of these things, and I know that you have an autoimmune disorder. <laughs> but but <laughs> it's like put them all together, hot mix. Yeah, but it's like I I do I I see, even when I see you doing horrendous things to a yeah. sausage bap, I know that you're enjoying it. You know, like um, sword swallowers. Yeah, it's like me with a sausage roll. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen you <laughs> not enjoy. <laughs> Some beige meat, like you know, you you, you a plate you, of beige. Yeah, if I if I the day I see you wolfing down like a a sausage baguette without pleasuring your eyes, you know, it's like or engaging um, in meaningful conversation. I'll, I'll know, I'll know, the, I'll know the dream is dead at yeah, that point because yeah. I'm like you're just doing it That's as it a, a big it's just a job. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a job at that point. Job. Yeah, it's just for sustenance. Yeah, yeah. food will never just be sustenance for me. Food's great though. It's too good to oh. inhale all at once. I do love food. I do love food. I didn't eat enough today. No. What do you have? What all day? Yeah. Tell us everything you ate today. Well, um, give me the highlights. Okay. Actually, this is bad. Give me the highlights. Okay, this is bad content. But here we are. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. no, it's not necessarily. No, okay. It depends what we do. With okay. It. Well, when I woke up, I like to start the day. Oh no. No, just, okay, just tell you me. You don't care already. Okay. I don't want any fluff. I just want to know the fact. Okay. Um, uh, we'd, 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 <laughs> I don't want a story. Okay. We'd run out of cereal. No. And we'd run out of oat this milk. This is too much information. So I ate a slice of Christmas cake. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I tried toasting some bread as well. But the toaster is slightly broken. No, your context so, isn't helping us. This so, is too much information. So, so the toast was half Speed frozen up, and half burnt. So I ate like three bites and threw it away. And then I bought some toast at work. And I ate that. You bought toast. Yeah, bought some toast. Uh, yeah, or bread. And then I toasted it at work. And then uh, I had some soup and a, a, a diddy baguette and a cookie. And then... What was in the baguette, John? Uh, just butter. Oh! <laughs> but I left the butter resting on the soup for too long. So it was practically a liquid. So oh, I just poured no. it over oh, the no. baguette. And then um, <laughs> I didn't eat until just before going on air. And I was very hungry. And I cooked a... Uh, 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 a turkey omelette with chips and peas and we had an oh. apple crumble for you pudding. You saved it with dinner. Fucking Ooh. hell. It was a day that of food so crimes Ooh. until you got good. to the end there. Ooh. I thought you were going to toast the Christmas cake and then like nah. eat some liquid butter in a shot well glass. In there, John. Thank you. Turned it around. <laughs> Shotted liquid butter. I mean, we've all been there. Yeah. My omelette game is so strong at the moment. <laughs> what a weird flex. I don't, I don't want to tell you, but like, Jesus Christ. What, like... what makes a good omelette? Uh, we're going off piece, dear, but... Texture. Okay. You may um, not. You may not think it. I didn't. What, what you want to do is, you want to. Here we go. You want to get butter. It's got to be butter. You love butter. Because you're not an animal. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know some kind what, of rather than oil. Yeah. Okay. Butter. Oh. It's got to be butter. Uh, that makes sense. Pre, I would. I would. Yeah. I would. Pre whisk your eggs. Sure, get them I nice and beaten. I do that. Get the pan nice and hot. Yeah. Butter. Let it melt. Yeah, when it's bubbling sure. slightly, chuck the eggs in. Pre whisk. Nice and fluffy. Yeah, you got it. And then you want to, because we're going to start cooking instantly if the yeah. pan is nice and hot. You want to scratch them around a bit with a with a soft, uh, like you what what you want. You want to let them kind of set, jumble it up a bit. Let them set again, jumble it up a bit. Right. Then don't touch it because you're not making scrambled eggs. You want it to solidify into a, a disc. Well, no, you. Don't. Well, here's the thing. If, <laughs> you, that if point, you just a yeah, savory pan. Yeah, if you just left it. You'd end up with like uh, essentially a perfectly consistent circular yeah, disc. But there'd of be egg. no texture. No. For that. So you want to like let it set for like a couple of seconds, scramble it a bit, let it set again. So you get you get like these kind of like little oh, mountains and valleys kind of for Lovely. forming, kind of like uh, the folds of a brain. Yeah, and then you should always <laughs> take it off the heat slightly earlier than you think you need to. Okay. How could you tell? Then? That's powerfully when it's still a little runny on top. Okay. You want to like no, fold no, it over, understand. take it off. So the that's heat. more clear. It will continue cooking on the plate. Yeah, basically. Uh, oh my god, that was very good. This good advice. Yeah. Well oh my god. We oh, should, uh, in, the, in the podcast description of this episode, mention that you do a recipe for an omelet. I'm really I'm hungry really. now. Have you eaten? Yeah. But you oh, just you'll probably about take omelets. forever over it if you eat it. Oh. <laughs> guys, guys, guys. Is that an omelet? Yes, it's my omelet. I've got a fork here. Guys. Yeah. The mood is getting rather fractious. Yes. Can we bring it on to more positive subjects? I don't know, can we? Nick. Let's find out. Nick, come on. 
Let's clean the palette. Here we go. Do you have a love? Yeah, I do. Oh, this is going to be good. I can feel it. <sighs> Here we go. Come on. First love of a new year. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure. Especially when what I'm bringing to the table is dinosaurs. Yes! I love dinosaurs. Yes! <laughs> dinosaurs! Okay. I'm, I'm all over this. Little known Nick Angel fact... Up until the age of about 14, I wanted to be a paleontologist. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to say dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 okay. I up to the age of seven, dinosaur. I wanted to be a dinosaur. Then, okay. then on, I realised that's a did little you, Did impractical. you know what a paleontologist was? Yes. Okay. I did, mainly because of Jurassic Park. Mainly cool. because of Ross from Friends. Mainly because of Ross from Friends and Jurassic yeah. Park. That's mm. how I found out what a paleontologist is, Friends. Oh, I actually oh, knew friends. what paleontologist was before I heard Ross say the word in Friends. Wow. That's my claim to fame. My God. Yeah. Um, that's impressive. I The school I went to was a boys' grammar school. Right, Ooh, I know. He went to a posh <sighs> school. I passed the eleven plus. Well, we were just sitting down on the on the gravel, picking our noses. Yeah, yeah. Nick was finding out about paleontology. You went to a peasant school. Yeah, sure as I did. like to call them. Yeah. The year before I started at that school, they did Latin God. as a subject, and I was excited <laughs> because I wanted to take Latin because dinosaurs are named in Latin. <laughs> because dinosaurs come from a past and they spoke <laughs> that, Latin. <dinosaurs>. Latin. <laughs> Latin's in the past, isn't it? <laughs> Dinosaurs come from the Roman Empire by Jupiter. Um, yeah, so I was that's how committed I was to this. I was going to learn Latin so that I could name my new dinosaur that I would find. Right. Yeah. Don't they use Greek to name Fuck knows, John. Maybe they do. I'm sure there's some Latin in he's there. He's made you look a right tit, hasn't Now he? listen, John. This was my my whole childhood was based on this, John. You can't just say one sentence and fucking discredit everything. You can't just sit there with your facts and throw it all out of the shit. Okay, I we talk what are we talking like the right, English think, versions of their names? I think are pterodactyl Greek. is Greek. I do well, think you're no, right. it's just like, like you know, like a scientific name for like uh, an animal. Yeah, sure. That's what I mean. Is it yeah. the, like the common? I think it's, no. I mean like the genus vision. species. Yeah, I, I want to say I want to say it's Greek. I understand. I'm gonna be, I'm, someone's going to tell me I'm an idiot now. It's Greek or Latin. It's one or the other. Well, maybe I'm half right then. Okay. I, well. I, my, I think some of them are native. What's most important it. is that you're better than us because of the school you went to. Yeah, well, I wish yeah. that was I think true. that's the point yeah. that we've all been trying to make. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wish that was true. Um, but yeah, so I really, I just really like dinosaurs and I sort of rediscovered yeah. dinosaurs recently. Yeah. Ah. Um, I am reading a book from my childhood called Dinotopia, which is nice. uh, a fantasy I, adventure. I, I owned that book. It's very a good. beautiful book. It's a very good book. Um, and I've also been playing uh, a game called Stuff with Adventures on the GameCube, oh. which has a lot of dinosaurs in it as well. And uh, yeah, both of these things, I, I played the game and I read that book in my childhood and I'm sort of revisiting all of that now. Mm. And I'm like, there's just something so magical about the fact that they seem like a story. Mm. But then you're like, hang on, they actually did they exist existed. though. They actually did. And well, I feel like we're at a point with the... <laughs> did, oh, uh, well, hello. Sorry, I, I, know, I know we have a creationist here. <laughs> did they though? Or did God... God just bury those it's a bones test. to test us. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There's a very good chance of that. There is a good chance of that. Leviticus. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just say a Bible word. Hey. Plus, I think that's Latin, isn't hey, it? Hey, Matthew. That's that's another. No, that's yeah, is it? The Bible. Is Matthew, it probably. Mark, Mark, Luke, and John. Yeah, there you go. Matthew, Mark, yeah. Luke, and John. There you yeah. go. We're, we're religious. They were there, God's um, nephews or something. God's best mates. Yeah. yeah. Tricer mate. You say triceratops. I say Deuteronomy. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> So yeah, I don't really have much more to say like, other than the I fact like there's something very magical about dinosaurs. Isn't it weird that when, like, it's, okay, uh, let's look at this from a mindset of, say, uh, a design executive at Playmobil. Okay. Because you're going to go like... I didn't think it I don't you going to say that. No, what, no is this, what is this range of exciting toys that we can bring out for kids? Mm. And they're going to go like, okay, um, pirates. Yes. That's a safe adventure for kids. Um, space. Space is Also good. good dinosaurs yes. you know it's just seen as it's like a, it's a genre of toys yes <laughs> kids love dinosaurs for some reason yeah i think it's coming from the same reason that kids like tractors you know yes and like, and like dump trucks they're just big they're cool big cool things well power rangers as well probably made dinosaurs quite cool that's true that's very true yeah, and i the, loved power rangers but there was a venn diagram overlap between yeah. robots and dinosaurs that's, that's very yeah, true. true land before time yeah, I love Land Remember Before those Time. Movies? Never seen any of the Land Before Time. You're, you're, but you have seen out. We're Back, which I didn't think <laughs> was real. It is a movie. Yeah, I didn't. John Goodman was in it. He was a voice in it because it's an animated movie. He was yeah, in the Flintstones. He's not a well. dinosaur. <laughs> no, no, no. He's literally there, live action in the background uh, of many scenes, screaming constantly. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was. He was Fred Flintstone. He, he was. was John yeah, well. yeah. That's kind of a shame as well, there isn't you go. it? I recall this is a true story as a kid when i, I think i was in reception i had a book 
Uh-huh. And in the book, Ooh, uh, I'm trying to think back. You. It was either like it was a picture book, and it was either time travel, okay, or uh, a scientist and his assistant going to like another world where there were dinosaurs. It's probably time was it travel. Mr. Peabody. It's probably time travel. Mr. Peabody. No. German. No, it was, it was a dog. It, it, it was it? like a, he's a dog. Yeah, Mr. Peabody. The way back machine. Sherman. Sherman. The way back. Is that what it was? It was a time travel device that Mr. Peabody had. Uh, and Mr. Peabody the dog. No. Yes. And yes. Sherman's yeah. the little lad. And now there is actually an online resource or called her. the Wayback Machine. This is uh-huh. a true thing, which archives really old dead websites. That's cool. So if you go on the Wayback Machine, you can search for a HTML website. HTML one point zero, yeah, okay. and it will find it. That's cool. It's weird, oh. but no, you I had ha- this book. I had this book, and it had like these beautiful kind of um, hand painted pictures of uh, this kind of scientist supposedly going back to like dinosaur times. And I swear, <laughs> this book presented as a fact. That's an absolute fact. Uh-oh. That dinosaur's skin was made of red rubber, which meant that bullets would bounce off them. And for most of my young life, I believed that was a concrete fact. There's a lot to unpack, though. Because seems... was, was this a work of fiction or not? It was. A... Well, it was a fictionalized education. No, but I'm, I'm saying, was it deliberately fiction? Well, yeah, because like they were going on a scientific adventure into okay. the past and meeting dinosaurs, but. So you what? go around telling people that. Well, how I... many people did you tell? <laughs> Maybe like you know the the arresting officer. And <laughs> a few. But it's like I to, to honestly I, I I genuinely believed for several years that that was true the and that if you bulletproof. if you ever time travelled to the past how did they die with a they? gun and well if they were bulletproof how did they die yeah meteors just a big bullet mate yeah but God uses yeah. meteors as bullets so it's you know, yeah. it's fine it's got you know? six full of meteors <laughs> meteor is God's bullet. <laughs> I Prove remember me wrong, will you? <laughs> <laughs> you little shit. Don't challenge God. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I uh, loved dinosaurs, as we've established. Mm. And then some research came out, which is now quite accepted, mm. that they were probably feathered. I am. Were yeah. you angry about that? I was. Mm. I was very angry because all of my books were wrong. I had loads of picture books of dinosaurs. Yeah. And they were all reptilian skin. Yeah. Uh, but now that I think about it as a grown-up artist, that's the coolest thing I can think. Why were they all feathered? I think it's a combination of their bird heritage mm-hmm. and the fact that they're cold-blooded. Yeah. So it's a very powerful not, situation. I think they were. No, that was the big. That's a big thing. Oh, really? Because lizards are, are cold-blooded. Would they? And dinosaurs be weren't cold-blooded, <gasps> which is the whole thing where people go like, they're not lizards. Oh, because they, they're they, like, more like birds. They became birds because they had like warm blood. Uh, would all the dinosaurs be feathered though? Uh, I don't. Would... I don't think it was thought that all of them were. Oh, they've all they've only found them way. like. In some of the fossils, like okay. imprints. Yeah, I definitely but, knew about the feathered thing, but I didn't know if it applied to all of them. I think that, it's, I think it's the smaller one. That's a big okay. thing. Because as a kid, it was like uh, I imagine if you were super. Because I was never into wrestling. I knew no, I had some neither. friends who were really no, into wrestling. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if you're into wrestling, wrestling, I imagine it's like as a kid, you know all the your all your favorite wrestlers and all their specialities and superpowers. Yeah. Um, but if you're into dinosaurs, you just kind of know these stock dinosaurs. You know the T-Rex. Yeah. You know the Stegosaur, the Triceratops. You know yeah, that one yeah. who's got a big, like, heavy tail that you can swing the around. Ankylosaurus. There we go. Ah. You know the one that's got, like, a big fan on its on its head. That kind of thing. Brontosaurus. Yeah. yeah. Brontosaurus, yeah. Brachiosaurus. Yeah. Uh, Diplodocus. Those long neck boys. Yeah. yeah. As I call yeah. them. Yeah. Giraffe-osaur. Well, that's it. That's the one. Well, Diplodocus. I want to bring up Diplodocus or Dip- Diplodocus. Diplodocus. I, say, yeah. I say Diplodocus now because I'm pretentious. I say potato. So, there we go. <laughs> and I say <laughs> But that was a big thing, isn't it? Because as a kid, you I used to say brontosaur or brachiosaur. I can't remember which one was correct. And then science turned around and said, actually, In that, your face. that doesn't exist. It was actually the other one. Mm. So it was actually a brontosaur. And then Diplodocus or Diplodocus, or Diplodocus. Whatever. Whatever. all the old models or toys you'd get would have like the he- the neck kind of snaking up. Yes, like a, like but then a it was thought that it just stayed flat, Yeah, they, they, they yeah. actually they oh. revised their knowledge and they were like... Oh, he actually... couldn't... But Brachiosaurus could hold his head straight up. Yes. But yeah. Diplodocus couldn't and it was yeah. out, out straight. That yeah. sounds like, like a fate worse than death, frankly. Mm. It's like, like a, a really, really long, long neck that you can't, can't lift. lift yeah, like that dogs. It's like dogs, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I suppose it is. Yeah. As, Isn't as, that interesting? I think even as a kid, I was kind of like... You got like you got you got your T Rex. You got your T Rex. Everyone knows a T Rex. And then people go like, Oh, you've got like the Allosaur. And I'm like, 
and what does that oh oh daddy what does that look like and they go well it's just like a slightly smaller t-rex <laughs> don't care you know <laughs> if it's not a different body shape is it i the, do not care is it the best one of the group because whichever the best that's the only one we care about so yeah. which is the strongest which would win out of t-rex and allosaurus because if t-rex would win i don't give a shit about allosaurus anymore i just yeah. don't care because t-rex didn't have a great reach though did it uh, if it, it not was, if it was in boxing, in. no. Unless it was feathered and it had little wings. Uh, and suddenly now we're talking. They seem to flip flop. Glide. Like, if... <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine anything? Can you imagine <laughs> the oh, horror? We're gonna outrun the team. Oh no! <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's flying. <laughs> Plesiosaur. That oh, was yeah. another one. You know, classic design. Oh, that's what the next monster is. Plesiosaur. Yeah. Plesiosaur. Yeah. The one. The one plesiosaur that never died and kept breeding. With itself. Don't take this away oh, from oh, me. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's no, like no. Family Ness. Yeah. It's like that. I think that was... it's, it's dead now, the Loch Ness Monster. Scottish. With blowing, blowing your thistle whistle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thistle <laughs> they, they, whistle. They had a thistle whistle. I, I think it's dead now, the Loch Ness Monster. Oh. Just for the record. When, when, did, it when did it die? The 60s. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> um... No, but you're a, yeah. Dinosaurs are awesome. Dinosaurs are great, aren't they? Yeah, great, great. Uh, I've oh, got my Instagram. I'm joining dinosaurs at the moment. Okay. He is. Yeah. I've got a love. Oh, all right. My my love for 2020 is sorting his shit out. <laughs> great. And this is a mo <laughs> this is a motivational love. I feel like you may have said this before. No, I'm saying it now. <laughs> Shut up, Nick. <laughs> you said something along these lines. No, before. no. Shut up. I mean it quite sincerely. Like, my, if there is an obstacle. Just sort it Take out. It over. Get it done. <laughs> What's your problem? Sort it out. It's fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. What sort of scale of obstacles? Okay, are we talking, two yeah. examples. One. These are going to be well, shit. Please. For the record, One, these are going to be shit. Any any long term <laughs> listener, any long term listener, will tell you that we, myself and Chris Ray, have frequently moaned about back pain. Yes, it'll be on in our yeah. Wikipedia article yeah. or our wiki. I guess. <laughs> Someone please create a wiki. Please make a show called Hate Wiki. Please make a wiki. We, you will make oh, my life be, complete. Yeah, we need better. credibility. But yeah, but... I'm not doing it myself. Right, moaned that. about back Tom. pain for a very long time. Yes, because you're old and decrepit. Because I'm old, thank you. I'm 33. I went to see a proper physiotherapist. Oh. Ooh. Um, uh, slash Should have gone to a crystal healer, mate. Yeah, well, I, I've been to a crystal healer. <laughs> Did that first. <laughs> yeah. Um, fun sidebar. Um, um, I've had a number of kind of digestive -y kind of problems over the years. Sure. Which are now all in hand. Oh, good. They're in your hands. After, <laughs> oh, no. after ah! I... After, ah! Shitting out my hands. After I turned to science, but I, I, went, <laughs> I went to see... Years ago, years ago, before I, I had my appendix out, all that kind of problems, I went to see a... Um, I thought a nutritionist... Oh, or is it like you have nutritionist and dietitian? One is a real science and one is not. I could not tell you. It's like the difference between astrology and astronomy. astronomy yes. Yeah, yeah. One's um, real and one's garbage. So, so I, I went to what I thought was a dietitian who would who would kind of like talk me through. So actually, like a soothsayer or something. Basically, yeah. It was like. <laughs> Did she have a crystal yeah. So I go in thinking like, okay, we're gonna have an honest discussion about like, um, uh, you know, things I'm allergic to, Jesus. you know, and and she sat me down. And she put vials, little glass cylinders, on my stomach, and then what was in the cylinders? Alarm bell should have been ringing at this. No, point. no, but but was it's it like food coloured water. I was in at that point. I was already I was already yeah, through I the mean, door. You can't leave. Now. So, but but literally, she's like, okay, lie down. I'm like, okay. Get me. And she puts this. Little, take your top off. She puts yeah. this little cylinder on my stomach, and then she lifts my arm and asks me to push back against her hand. And then she goes, okay, yes, mm, interesting. She takes and she's writing stuff. What could stuff. she possibly be writing? I know. And then she, she does this like thirty <laughs> times. <laughs> Sounds like, like you have anxiety issues. <laughs> but but she does it. She does this like thirty times. Very gullible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's like, but it, but it was complete fruit loopery. And, and she left the room at one point. And I stood up and I looked at the notes she was making, and it was like, and, and she had this this wooden box full of all these cylinders. And and they were and they all had just the same white kind of stone inside the chris mm. inside the cylinder. They were maybe like a an inch or two long. Was this in like a shopping centre? This happened. No, <laughs> it was tent. it was in like a proper building and everything. What did yeah. the notes say? Well, it was just like you know, oh, you know, going like okay, um, you know, like good, weak, strong, you know, all that kind of thing. But like, I, she left the room and I looked out and, and all these cylinders were labelled in a different way. Right. And one said like beef and one said like um newspaper print 
and one said like um what? salt and all these kind of things and i was like hatred yeah and i was like <laughs> what writing fuck? something on a piece of paper doesn't make it so no, but all these cylinders yeah. looked identical they all had like the same white kind of imagine grains if, in ima- them. right imagine if someone did all that shit and then said right i think i got the answer um you reacted when i put the post-it note that said beef on you yeah so you're related to beef now yeah and then you cut beef and then you can't the eat any beef. Life. Yeah, but that's that. Well, yeah. Imagine that. You, you have hit the nail a hundred percent on the head because that is what it was. Because when she came back, she said that I started throwing that is it. Mental. You started throwing it. Yeah. Brilliant. Because, you because what? Well, I started cheating. So what were you doing? Oh, she, I le- see. she left oh, the room right. for a bit, and then I she came back, and then so, uh, and she put a cylinder on your stomach, and she, lift your hand, and then she put her hand on your hand. She go okay, and just press back against the hand. And her her oh, sign. Oh, I see. She, we're checking whether it's. Yeah. You. So her scientific method was, air quotes for the benefit of the listener at home was when you press back against the hand, she could sense the weakness or oh, the relative strength in what you were God. doing, and she'd go, okay, well I put the beef cylinder on his belly, <laughs> and now his hand is slightly weaker, so he must be allergic to beef. So when you threw it. Were you aware of how you were throwing? No, I just started randomly just doing. Randomly I just started randomly it, yeah. doing shit, you know. I, I, you room. know, just like, yeah, just oh, I'm gonna be super strong now or super weak. Yeah, you know, when she it, puts frosties, I just you're like, Fuck! but yeah, you know, she's like, this guy loves frosties. He needs frosties. <laughs> They're to live. great. She writes a letter to your mum. <laughs> <laughs> must old John must have frosties <laughs> every day for every meal. <laughs> I very quickly like cross out beef and it's like, okay, if I adjust the F, beer. <laughs> This guy loves beer. This guy you needs imagine beer. Now, <laughs> yeah. If we were sitting here now and you actually were gullible enough to fall for that, and that's the reason you don't have burgers or yeah. you know, roast and beef And it lasted whatever. for 20 years or however long yeah. it is. You've closed off an entire avenue of imagine? pleasure because Bloody of some kind of, some kind of nonsense. Anyway, this isn't your love. It isn't. No, what, what were we, we talking, what were we about? talking Getting about? Getting shit yeah. done. Okay, so yeah. Back pain for a very long time. <laughs> I decided to actually see a professional, not a fruit loopist, good. not not some kind of nonsense. <laughs> and this guy, he's very good, he's amazing, and he said, because yeah. I've had his back pain, and he yeah. goes, you know what? It's not actually your back, it's your hips. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, and he's like, it's the top of your hips and the top of your ass. You've got weak muscles there. <laughs> the weak ass. You've got a weak ass. Yeah. So he said, <laughs> okay. all that beef you've been eating. <laughs> or not eating. <laughs> this may be. Yeah. You need more years. frosties, John. <laughs> God's sake, eat some beef and frosties. What's wrong with you? Imagine if that was your prescription. Beef and frosties. Just get them in you. Well, that's going to be weird to cook. I didn't say cook. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh God. he's given me all these amazing exercises. And they're really hard. Oh, Like, I, I do them. And they hurt because mm. I'm like, well, they should. oh god, that means these, they're working. These yeah. bits of me I didn't know hurt are now hurting. If you chop your arm off and it hurts. That you, means it's working. You're doing it right. Yeah. You're doing it right. Yeah, it's a good knife. You should buy yeah. another. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, but but the thing is, I'm starting to feel the benefits. There you go. Shit I bed. feel like ten years younger. I know oh. that sounds stupid. But I've been feeling like an old man. <laughs> Send me to this man. <laughs> yeah, I've I've been feeling like okay, this is the end now. Like mm, this is where the it end <laughs> like, I know it's like okay, you hit thirty three. This is where it begins. Like you are just gonna be for the rest of your life some sag sack of shit <laughs> who is always in pain, always miserable, always kind of like. Well, just you are a writer. I mean, yes, yeah. <laughs> thank you. But if I'm gonna be miserable I w- and if I'm gonna be a tortured genius, I want it, I want it to because of, be because of whiskey. Not because Fine. of my weird ass muscles. I see, of course. So I'm doing these exercises, <laughs> and I'm starting to feel better. And it's like, should have done this years ago. Mm, should have. Instead of going for that crystal lady. And then, uh, yes, bloody crystal lady. <laughs> Could we please know? I didn't listen to anything she kind of said. But <laughs> but going forward, uh, and we talk about like, you know, just sorting your shit out. Uh, we have a concrete path in our garden. Yes. I, I'm which, familiar with it. Which, which we've been trying to get rid of, out. yeah. And it's like, we've been thinking for ages, like, how are we going to get it out? It's awful. It's ugly. It's mm. just like, it, it's really grim. It's going right down the middle of our garden. And I'm like, well, let's just break it. Just so this is what up. I mean. There's a concrete path in everyone's life. It's a <gasps> metaphor now. Uh, What's my concrete path? Get a sledgehammer. I need to find my concrete path. And it's not going to be easy. I'm telling you, day one, we picked up that sledgehammer. I got maybe half a meter, half a meter out. Maybe less. Maybe less, you know. <laughs> 
And because I would be just for the record. <laughs> If I worked on something for a day and that was all I'd done, I would be devastated. Well, that would be it. You'd give up. Less than half a let's meter. Just, let's be honest. Oh, know. that's progress. Oh, I've done it. Let's be honest. Like, it was not a full day's work. <laughs> okay, I did, it was fine. maybe like you a couple of hours. Yeah. <laughs> but we were a little worried that maybe there's like a pipe under it mm. like maybe there's like a gas pipe and i have a bit of history of oh, gas pipes so oh, yeah. like let's yes, not do. let's yeah. not blow like, it would be like the old kitchen like extreme yeah like. let's let's not blow that up so i dug under it so I, I i dug like a tunnel under it to the point where i could like get my arm under this to uh. prove that there was nothing under it and then i went to town with the sledgehammer very therapeutic believe me if you have a problem problem in your life you'd be amazed how a sledgehammer may solve it like <laughs> And it felt great, you yeah. know, it felt great. Yeah. And clearly, the guy, the previous homeowner, because there's only been one homeowner before yeah. us, he's a maniac, dug a, a, a genius and, and a madman at the same time. Like, he dug a trench, threw a ton of house bricks in it, and right. poured concrete all over it. That's, how it's done. That's a path. That's, That's a how path you make mate. a path. And now, I'm disagree. and now I'm destroying all his work. Yeah. So day well, it sounds to me like you got the shit end of the stick there. Well, day one, half a meter. Day two, four meters. Uh, it's accelerating now you know. once you're in yeah. you know and there's points where once you're waist deep in concrete you can just lever up this like kind of like two meter oh. stretch of concrete oh. it's, ins it's insanely heavy <laughs> and I hurt and I'd undone all the good work that I'd done through my exercises yeah but it's good and we're making like and tomorrow I'm going to be back out there yeah with a sledgehammer. Well, wow, we've had we've had fairly similar weeks, John. Oh, tell me more. Because I went for a back massage Ooh. on Monday. I've never had one. Just at a spa, though. I should have not not quite the same thing. You should. You and I built a something. wardrobe yesterday. Oh, built a wardrobe. Built a wardrobe. Check you out. There you go. Ali and so I have been redecorating a room as well, so we've been doing stuff. We've been well. doing stuff. There this you go. is the point. Twenty twenty. Get shit Get done. Get shit done. There you Get go. shit done. True. Sure, whatever. That's my motto. You will feel so much better. <laughs> Think about the concrete path in your life. I really want to find a concrete path. Find a concrete way. path in your life. And, and smash if, it up. Yeah, and if you John's need... John's basically encouraging us to just smash up the road. If you yeah. need a tool, get that tool. Buy one. Get that tool. Get a tool, smash your path. Yeah. Yes, and I know people say, oh, but I can't afford it. It's like, literally, a sledgehammer is maybe like 15 to 20 quid. It is very affordable. Get a sledgehammer, <laughs> smash that problem. Get a sledgehammer, solve your problems. Whatever your problem is. Maybe it's accounting. I don't know. <laughs> Get a sledgehammer. You sound a bit like the crystal woman. What's, yeah. the, what's the concrete path in your life? Yeah, there's nothing you can't do. Don't eat if beef. If you just get a fucking sledgehammer. It's fine. Get a sledgehammer. Don't eat beef. You'll be fine. If she, if she had a little vial with a little crystal in it, she placed on the path. It's his concrete. Sledgehammer on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, he's so strong. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Strength is through the roof. <laughs> uh, oh. What's your love then? Chris? Oh, go on then. Go on then. Um, transfer deadline day. Oh, fuck off. What? Come on! <laughs> Transfer deadline day for the okay. uninitiated. Yes, Can't believe I this is that. how we end. This is a football. Jesus Christ. This is a football oh. reference. Now, football. There used to be um, transfers all throughout the season, so you could just do it all year round until about March. Great. And then you could just sign at any time and all this. A few years ago, they introduced transfer windows. So you can only buy players in the summer, right? And sell players in the summer and in January. Now, this gave all the television companies a chance to broadcast from outside the training grounds of these various clubs going, oh, hi, there's going to be lots of transfers here today. It's going to be really exciting, so stay Is tuned. It? And then by midnight, when you're still watching for some reason... Because you're you. There'd be no transfers here today. Oh! <laughs> by which time, the great unwashed have gathered... What, people show up for this? Oh, yeah. They showed up to such an extent that one year, someone turned up with a dildo and started putting it in the reporter's ear. Yes, you got it. <laughs> and Sky became the victims of their own success in that mm. regard. Yeah. So the excitement that they whipped everyone up into bit them in the ass, and now people are banned from turning up on transfer day. Or because there's dildo man. Because a man stuck a dildo in a reporter's ear. This is the singularity, isn't it? This is the point at, at which. You make enough of a song and dance about anything. At some point, a dildo will go into a man's ear. And at that point, yep. you've pushed it too far. What is the dildo in your ear? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's a metaphor as well. That's the opposite issue. I can't help but feel that this also ties back into you saying earlier that you can't have any fun without a suffering dildo. at the start and suffering at the end. That's true. That's also true, yeah. 
But to do be you fair, like transfer? Transfer, I do. I love it because it used to be, and it still is to an extent, quite exciting. Really? Because you think clubs are actually I'm doing stuff because everyone leaves everything to the last minute. Of course they do. And it sometimes, some years, it's been fucking brilliant. <laughs> I'm sorry. You've when... had plenty of had people filming helicopters carrying footballers from Liverpool to Newcastle in it. What they actually physically have to get there in time. Oh yeah, that they have window. to do. They have to have their medicals. They have to do a medical before they sign for a club. And if everything's agreed in one day, then it all hell breaks loose. One year, a bloke turned up at a football club, a player in his car, ready to sign for the club. And it turned out they hadn't even put an offer in for him. And he'd done an interview going, I'm really excited to be here. Wait. And it turned out they didn't even want him. Wait, did he <gasps> so go what to the wrong club no, he or just, something? He just didn't. He, but he left his old club. He, someone had told him, oh, they're going to put an offer in for you. And it's going to be great. And you'll be signing for this club shortly. So he turned up at their ground in his car with his agent and went, I'm really excited to be here. Hopefully helping the team for the rest of the season. And then they went, no, we didn't even want him in the first place. So he'd just be given the wrong information. Surely it's his, chaos. Surely his agent should no, have his, known. His agent just took him there. He just went, oh, I've heard they're interested, so we'll get down there. Can I be an agent? Yeah, oh, you probably you can. Can I be a footballer? Look, look, John, you, you're you the agent. I'm the player. You just drive me down at transfer deadline. At this point. You've got to bear in mind that <laughs> yeah, football why agents, not? Yeah. Football agents make their money from getting players transferred to different clubs. Which he did which he didn't do. They get a percentage of any fee. And bear yeah. in mind, football transfers go up to millions. 200 million these Jesus. days. Jesus. Which That's, you but, can make a movie but, for that. Probably. But it's like yeah. if your one job is to get your client <laughs> yeah. transferred. I mean, but it's it's like this is one of the things that's gone down in folklore and every January 31st hashtag transfer deadline day even if it's boring as sin will be trending on social media and some of the content is absolutely brilliant. Uh, wow. But I mean like if all I'm it, amazed. If all it takes is turning up I can do that. That's well, the bare you know, minimum say, that anyone yeah. can do. If you've not called in advance, if you've but not... As with all things football, people have been whipped up into, into such a frenzy about it. Oh and there God. was one year where it was brilliant and compelling viewing. But it's still fun. Gillingham last year signed five players on deadline day. It was exhilarating. Well, they just on, drunk, the, on, they, the they just on the deadline just day. Just drunk with power. Yeah. Is it, almost like, is it almost like they're coming up to the day and they're like, we're not going to do any transfers this year. And then it gets to the deadline, it's like, it's too exciting, Everyone, let's do it! It is, everyone just shits themselves and just all sorts of crazy but, but, things start But in, in principle, they could they could arrange a transfer the day before transfer Anytime deadline Anytime in January day. you yeah. can make a transfer. So, so, so when is transfer deadline day? 31st January at midnight. Okay. So always you, always so will you be watching? No, not this year. So how are you... <laughs> So how I'll be on, no, I'll be on Twitter because I John will testify. I used to watch Sky Sports News religiously. Yeah, all day, every day. I'm yeah, sorry, I, I, li I lived I'm through sorry. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it was in hindsight incredibly boring. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Um, but transfer deadline day is just good fun because it's it's a load of bollocks, but it's just exciting. Brilliant. It just is. I great. love it. It's great. So when, oh, when do they this, start yeah. broadcasting the excitement? Like, when does it kick off? On well, Sky Sports News runs twenty four seven, doesn't it? Well, do you remember? I don't know. You would know. Well, twenty four seven. It I've, runs twenty four seven. I've blocked the out transfer a lot of deadline that day. It's like Sky Sports Christmas, basically. Okay. If I go on YouTube and type in a dildo in a man's ear, you'll find it. Brilliant. I'm doing that. You'll find it like instantly. Great. I'll probably find some other and stuff. And that's as well, that but... was the cutoff point where everyone just went, "This has probably gone a bit far now." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well. So they so they basically said to the reporters, "Right, you can go just inside the training ground, so the supporters can't get to you." I love the idea that of all the things that would generate a dildo in an ear situation that leads yeah. to someone going, "Oh, this has gone a bit too far." It's not a World Cup final. No, you know, it's not. It's not a you know a, a colossal event where England take home the cup. No, it's not that. It's transfer no, deadline it's day. Transfer deadline day. It's literally a day all about admin. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. It's a bookkeeping football day. Yeah, where a dildo ended up in a man's ear. I think the reason probably is is that they were really bored. <laughs> yeah, stood there. I'm so bored. Oh, it's, can... it's definitely the unemployed of the local area. I can, sure, only, sure, I, sure, can, no. I can only imagine that this is how people lose their minds in like a, a kind of like a, a mid league club. Yeah, where they're like, okay, guys, let's not go crazy. We've already made a few transfers. You know, Jan January fifth. You know, <laughs> yeah. feeling pretty good about this. I have my hand on the cash box. It's locked. We don't need anyone else. Let's not do anything stupid. Smash cut to 10.55. Wasted. Spy! Yeah. Let's just spy. do it! One year, <laughs> Chelsea bought spy a player. Spy the football man! Ronaldo! Spy the man with the football boots! <laughs> One year, Chelsea We've got 15 a... strikers and no goalies. <laughs> What's going to happen? It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> I'll be in goal. We'll win all attack! All attack! <laughs> Chelsea signed a striker from Liverpool one year for 50 million. 
And Liverpool just went, we need a striker! Oh, no. <laughs> and just went and bought a terrible striker for all the money they just got. Off the dark web. Because transfer deadline day. It's like, we need a striker. <laughs> we, need a, we need a striker! We need a striker, but no one's selling. Quick, let's get to Boston Dynamics. Can you build a striker for yeah. us? We need a robot now! <laughs> it's like, like if, I'm the, if I'm the manager, I'm like, I'm turning to the accountant, I'm like, Good God, run home, bury as much cash in the garden as you can find. They're coming. <laughs> <laughs> but they're with, the striker, with... they signed him from Newcastle, and he's recently gone back to Newcastle on a free transfer. What? And they spent like 30, 40 million on him. Jesus. It's bonkers. You could, you could make a robot football man with that money. Oh, yeah. Spend that money one. instead with Boston Dynamics. Like, really realistic. Buy a as robot well, football man. He, yeah. You could fool the authorities. All it takes is one club to make a robot football man. Could you not? <laughs> then it begins. <laughs> then, then that's the robot <laughs> uprising. <laughs> if you. When people start chanting the robot's name. Robot! Robot! Uh, we love you, robot. <laughs> we do. <laughs> if you end up spending 30 million, mm. say. On a striker. That's actually very cheap in the current market. Yeah, John, you uh, idiot. 60 million. On, well, whatever. You get, name any arbitrary figures, fine. 95 million. 95, whatever. Well, is that, is that cheap? Fine, is yeah. that a good value? That will get you a good striker, yes. What? An all right? How many stars? A, a top quality okay. striker. Okay. I like a Michael Owen. I want the best. Like a, like a Michael Owen. Like, like a Michael sure. I want. <laughs> you I, step out of a poster and you yeah. I want the best, <laughs> though. How oh, much, how much we're gonna have to pay? You want the them? best? Well, the world record transfer is around two hundred million. Who's the best striker right now in Who's the whole? Lionel the Messi. Messi, right. I know Messi. Yeah, you know even Messi. I know Messi. He's good. He's Messi, charming. Messi and Ronaldo remain the best players in the world. So if right. I wanted to buy Messi right now, <laughs> forget it. Okay, okay. okay. Thanks. Give, give me, you be, you be. Wait, wait, wait to talk down Christ, to me. Give, I don't, I don't, <laughs> how do we get? Yeah, but I don't even know what you'd have to pay. Okay, for that. well, when, when okay. was the last time he transferred he, anywhere? He never has. Bar Who did he play for? Barcelona? Bar he plays for Barcelona. Oh, I go oh, oh John. shit, hot. John. Yes, I know but that. He's, he's from their youth team, but you would be talking half a billion at least. Fuck. I'm not joking. How much of a, how much do you reckon they pay him? What's his salary? Well, he gets some his, of that money. His salary would be about a quarter of a million a week. Okay, okay. But so when he sold, what? did he get any of that money in the transfer? Pretend some footballers do. Wait, okay. Okay. it depends. You, there's certain contingencies. Okay, so whoa, whoa, whoa. a quarter of a million a week yeah, is his more, salary, more or less. Let's right, round. Maybe, probably more than that. Okay, let, let's round probably. that up. So a million, a million a month. Yeah, I would say it's probably more than that. But yeah. Okay, so let's That's be before all his endorsements and his sponsorships. Okay, let's be charitable and say he's earning a million a month. That's okay. Do they break <laughs> it down and say that means if he scores four goals in a month? That's would, okay. We're we're <laughs> that, that, that means you're betraying your lack of knowledge now. But we're paying two hundred and fifty thousand pounds a per goal. goal. Y you could look at it like that. Uh, well, I am looking at it like that. Like <laughs> how how, how many to, anyway. how many games a month would Messi play on average? Seven. Okay, seven seven games. How how frequently would you expect him to score? Well, he does score frequently. That's why he's the best. Well, one would one would certainly hope. If you for played that seven much. games, I would expect him to score at least seven goals. Okay, so a okay. goal every match. So a goal, a goal, a goal, a goal a game. A goal a, a goal game is a, game. a phenomenal record. Okay, okay. But he's so, a phenomenal player. He, yeah, but he tends to score more than a goal a game Jeez. on average. Okay, so a, a million does not divide neatly into seven. All right, eight, whatever. Okay, well, that's, it could that, be I'm, my math ain't that good. Whatever. Okay, I understand the point you're making that what they, you're spending an inordinate amount of money per goal. Well, I'm just but football's a false economy. Well, it is a false economy, but I'm 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 just I'm genuinely fascinated by it because it's like football is not a high-scoring game. No. 140 grand a goal would be if it was seven. Amount. 140 yeah. grand a goal. But then players players are commodities now, especially people like Messi. They would bring money into the club in terms of shirt sales. Sponsorship, yeah, marketing and da, all that, da, da, yeah. Bloody hell. But it's, it's not just about what happens on the pitch now. But it's at the top level, was but, it ever? But it's not well, like <laughs> yeah. cynics would say no. I think I think it was though. But it's so weird, isn't it? Because like you can win. Well, frankly, you could you could attend a very high ranking game in football, mm. and it could be a draw, and oh, that could easy. be a very good game to end oh, on wait, a draw. You could, yeah, you could attend. You could attend a lower club. Drawing nil nil at Barcelona, say. Yeah. Say if I would see Gillingham when they drew at Barcelona, the world would implode. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be seismic shifts in the world. I orbit. can't wait for that day. It's yeah. Be great. Oh, I can't. That'd be great. Yeah. I mean, Gillingham would probably. Uh... 
It'd just be so happy to be there. I I would imagine. Oh, that would that could never happen. Because I a, a game like that. Because I I've been with you to many um shitty games. Yep. That have ended in a draw. Yeah. And I certainly you know did not feel like I'd got an um your money your money one hundred and forty grand forty grand. No, but Gillingham Gillingham wouldn't pay anywhere near that. Right? No, I am didn't score any goals either. No. So it's you not like came with me it, it? to the worst game I've ever been to, the... and I have been to around. <laughs> Probably 500, 600 football matches. You see, it's interesting because you say the worst so game you've ever seen, and I say the last game I yeah. ever saw. Wait, I... we were trying to find the worst thing that ever happened to you. Was it that? It was. That was up there. Okay. In Stockport v Gillingham. Their pitch looked like a ploughed field. Yeah. Oh. It was horrendous. Yeah. I play. That's why I invented the clock game. Is it? Oh, yes. What a game. Uh, there you go. And for the uninitiated, uh, the clock game is where you look at the clock as it turns uh, zero, and then you look away, and in your head, you count to 60. And see if you're right. And, and, and then you see if you're right when yeah. you get back. And you only have to do that 90 times. <laughs> and, and, and then- Plus the, stoppage time. Plus stoppage time. And then the horrible the horrible place you're in will eventually end, <laughs> and you can, you can be elsewhere. I'm going to Rochdale in a couple of weeks. Why? For a very similar experience. Why? Well, unless we win. You can keep asking, but- <laughs> Well, I keep a spreadsheet of all the Gillingham games I've been to, and that's 230-odd. But you haven't Gillian. been doing it from the beginning? Oh, no, I have, but I go to other games as well. Oh, I, I don't just go to Gillingham games. I, I go to some better games. <laughs> <laughs> How many games do you think you've seen in your lifetime now? At least 500. Like, like As in, I've been there at the game. In terms See, of I games like... I've seen on the telly... Lord knows. I feel like your thing's football, right? Thank you. My thing is like comics Di- dinosaurs and games. Dinosaurs, <laughs> yeah, dinosaurs. Yeah. Yeah. Not, dinosaurs and meat. Yeah, cold blooded, so they, I can't be that good. Yeah, um, comics and games, but I haven't been to that many comic cons. I don't. No, think. I don't think I have. Mind you, they're rarer. They don't come around as often. No, as no, well, they're every week, True. more or less, apart it's from three months in the it's summer. Every day, bro. It is every well. The day Euros first. are this summer. I'm going to some England games. Fuck! So. I can't wait. Woo! Shit! Shit! Fuck! Piss! I'm so, happy. I'm so happy for you. Right. Well, yeah, be good. Oh, there you go. Transfer deadline day because yeah. of sheer ridiculousness. I mean, Fair I, th- enough. I think we have to stop. If only because I was kind of like gazing into the abyss. Yeah, yeah I, I felt like we could have just asked you questions till. I know. It's okay. like and well, I was talking to Liz about what audio, I was going to say for my love it? before I came, and I said. Well, I'll get a lot of questions. And you did. And I, did. I know, and it's fascinating. It's like <laughs> me. we don't know uh, anything. I know, it's like, uh, tell, us, tell us about sport. Tell us about football. You know, tell, tell us more about this world. Tell you us know, about yeah. the pig bladder, the boys. <laughs> <laughs> the strong boys. The, strong, the, the bigger strong. boys came and kicked the pig's bladder away from us. Strong ballsmen. Oh, so that's what they spent my lunch money on. Uh, ah, it all makes course. sense now. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, what's... You know, not that, not that this isn't delightful to learn about football, but sure. the big question The big question is, of the day. The big question for 2020 Ooh. is, Ooh. what won out? Is it love or is it hate? And bear in mind, mm. this will define the year to come. Oh, that's an unfortunate pressure to put on it. Well, John, normally I would say hate, yes. but because it's a new year and I've turned over a new leaf, I'm going to say hate. <laughs> Well, because I know that there is a sledgehammer in my very near future, oh. I'm actually going to say love, and that's not a gimmick. So it all comes down to me. Well, you have to decide, uh, as is so often the case. As is, just uh, because I sit here and wait. <laughs> I'm going to say hate as well. Yes! <laughs> Fuck you! Yes! <laughs> Well, uh, I guess that's 2020 just fucked, basically. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, go, go um, you know. Go, Lock up your loved ones. Hold them close. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a it's rough. It's going to be a rocky, rocky uh, ride. A rough watch out, 12 months. Watch out for those meteor god bullets coming your uh, way from his six shooter in heaven. Wait, aren't we, oh God, I'm so, I've just switched off. Aren't we potentially leaving the EU at the end of the month? It won't happen, so let's not worry about it. Oh, I'm not even paying attention <laughs> at this point. I, I wouldn't worry too much about that now. Um, this has been a show called Hate. Welcome to episode 51, Woo! or goodbye from episode 51. So. Thank you so much. Start, yeah, who'd yeah. have thought we'd make it this far? I did. What's so in this episode, you mean? I well, good God, yeah. I mean, there. God, it's a bumper episode, nearly two hours. Oh, shit. Oh, you're Ooh. getting your money's worth. Make it up for last time. Um, but even though my two compatriots are bitter, harsh men whose Thank souls you. are like coal yes. deep inside them, yes. go buy a sledgehammer, yes. sort your problems out. 
take control of your world. I mean, that could be taken so many different ways. Just get yeah, a sledgehammer. Just get no, a sledgehammer. No bad has ever come from getting get a sledgehammer. Get a sledgehammer and a beef crystal and, and you know, just just solve <laughs> your problems. A beef crystal sounds delicious. <laughs> I've been John. I've been beef crystal. I. <laughs> you sound delicious. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you next episode. Look after yourselves. Woo! Wubba da ba boop!